a lion. You got the heart of a sheep. That's part of my diet. I came to rip you apart. This is the part where you best show respect for the God. You got more bullets to dodge. You got more people around you that won't get involved. They don't want none of the smoke. They know I'm coming for blood when I come for that throw. Like, whoa. When I move through these streets, rush up is what I'm applying. I got no love for the ones on the feet. You should just move out my way. I hunt down the money and who's in my way? What do you want me to say? I'm gonna go hard till they lock me away. This year I'm making a killing. That could be money or that could be blood that I'm spilling. That could be more food I'm drilling. Don't, 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 don't catch no feelings. I'm way past the ceiling. I'm up. I'm on top of the world like I'm throwing in Montana. I get the check with a whole lot of commas. Keep telling these cowards I ain't for the drama.
perfect silence to end the war. Oh, chilling a god, oh, bottomless abyss. It's the ultimate nothingness with death is bliss. Fight, fight, fight. Destiny, oh, ah, 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 ah
get this mic adjusted. Welcome to the 264th episode of uh, the UCW show. Check the title. Hammerhand, Sandman, and Rolo Tomasi discuss Lauren Southern and Brittany Venti. Man, I was trying to find a much better title than that. I was like, Hammerhand, Sand. I wanted to shout out Hammerhand. I definitely wanted you guys to know that Sandman and Rolo were joining tonight. It should have been Sandman and Rolo, maybe HH, Sandman, Rolo, discuss the thought apocalypse. But then you guys don't know about what we're talking about. Shout out to Good. One of the best, honestly, one of the best artists I've seen online. Shout out to the Gecko Ninja. Look, guys. Your boy Chronic owes Gecko Ninja some shekels. So please help me pay Gecko Ninja what I owe him before he flies out to Denver, Colorado with his uh, artist pad and breaks my kneecaps. Please. (laughs) You could be like, where's my money? Where's my money? He's going to be up on my kneecaps. He's going to take his side tablet and smack me upside the head. So if you want to support the show, if you want to support the Warband, if you want to support all these dope-ass animations, I'm pretty sure every single animation I showed tonight, Gecko did, guys. Um, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, Every single animation, actually one animation, it was the Chronic slaying the demon pigs. Gecko didn't didn't do, but every other one he did. So if you want to support the show, if you want to support the Warband, consider donating to cash app slash cash sign under Chronic. That's cash app slash cash sign under Chronic. If you want a return on your money, consider going to the Teespring store. Where you can buy the first issue of... Of the Great Demon Pig War comic, Chronicles, done by our very friendly, I can't even say, I gotta say this in a no homo way, done by our other warband artist, Ghost Handy, and yes, I gave him that name. (laughs) It's a Ghost Handy. It's like, what does Ghost Handy mean? What does Ghost Handy do? He makes art. You ignorant bastards. Anyhow, and if you want to see yourself depicted as a warband character, consider going to Gecko Ninja's card. He's posting the link to how you uh, commission him. And the next time I do a scene of Chronic's Army charging, if you guys pay Gecko Ninja to depict you, your character, whatever it is, he'll send me the file. And I will use that on my promotions. But more importantly, he'll put it in the uh, animation. So next, if you guys want to see... And you guys should just send... Um, either a doc, I don't know. If you guys want your YouTube persona, if you show your face online, send a picture or whatever you want or t- describe how you want to be depicted, he will depict you and then put you in an animation. I'll make sure to do that. But we got two very special guests here tonight. We have Hammerhand... The MGTOW monk, the man on the mountain, the one who refuses to wear a plunger. Welcome, Hammerhead. Sir, how are you doing this evening? Oh, I am doing just dandy. We also have Sandman. What's up, Sandman? Nothing much. What's going on? Oh, hey, I've been, um, I think for two months, three months, Rolo's been saying, oh, I'd be down to talk to Chronic. And I'd be like, yeah, I'd be down to talk to Rolo. Oh, no. This has been going on for like three months. And then like, what was it, like a week or two ago, this whole shit between him and Brittany Venti went down. And I'm just like, you know, this is the perfect dive. Like both of their Twitter pages, they're just tweeting at each other, subtweeting, like retweeting their fans. It's like an absolute shit show. It's like a hammerhead. It's like you go to the Cincinnati Zoo. Have you been to Cincinnati Zoo, hammerhead? No, uh, drove through it once. Hmm. Well, I mean, the actuals. The actuals. No, drove through it once. <laughs> they have an enclosure of chimpanzees. And when I went there, I think I went there three years ago. Um, Sam, I think this is funny. The chimps there, for some reason, love throwing turds at people. And you know who I was thinking of the entire time at that zoo? Oh, come on. TFM. Yeah, TFM. <laughs> I was thinking of TFM. 
I'm like, the amount of shit flinging happening on Twitter between the Venti Simp Squad and the, the Rolo Bros, I don't know, we'll call them Rolo Bros, or whatever, Rolo's fans, has been ridiculous. But, you know, Rolo got trolled, I'm like, with quotes, by Brittany so Venti. Rolo showing up? Yeah, he's showing up in, I think, like, 15 minutes. Okay, gotcha. I thought you were going to say he's not showing up because you've been trying for three months. Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm just saying, like, I haven't been try- I have actually haven't tried. I have a lot of people saying they'd be down to talk with me, and I just either I'm too lazy to email them, or I forget about it, or I get too stoned one night. Um, but I had it in the back of my head. I got to schedule something with Rolo, and then Brittany Venti started, you know, raging. You know, what, you, know what the, you know what the sad thing about the whole Brittany Venti thing is? Like, you get sean and her on the whatever podcast and you can tell this guy is so inexperienced and and she's just like he's lost man yeah he's completely <laughs> lost and you can just see her like pulling the strings and he has no idea and Look, i just I, feel I, so bad for him i have a theory about this and, and you know it's probably bullshit it's probably pie in the sky stuff but i think personally that she surveyed the landscape and she picked the easiest target with the most assets to pull away from the manosphere. Well, I, look, I honestly think she's looking for you know a relationship, whatever. But she's she's looking for someone that's. See, there's the holy grail for women, which is the untapped Chad, the Chad that doesn't know he's a Chad, that gets attention, gets money, uh, and doesn't understand his own value as a man. And and women prey on men like that. Yes. And of course. The, the men have no idea. So, you know, the guy will have a low body count. So that means he's more likely to bond with her. But but she has a high body count. So odds of her bonding with him is slim to none. But he doesn't well, you know, know that. If you don't want one with a high body count, Sandman, it just means that you're insecure. Oh, yes. Shame me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I you think can't it's, tolerate I, I... all of my sexiness, bitch. I kind of disagree with what you said, Sandman. Not that... You can be high value without being Chad, right? Like Jeff yeah, Bezos exactly. is high value. Well, yeah, if, if you have a high status, yeah, like well, if Jeff you have Bezos a lot of money, got all the status right? and yeah, money. yeah, for sure, you have a lot of money. So I wouldn't call think before you sleep a Chad. Um, that's my only issue with the argument. But yeah, no, he doesn't realize his own value because, and people have used this term. You guys are both MGTOW. People use this term, and I hate this term. And they basically they would just slander all MGTOW as a mistow. Men sent their own way. Yeah. But there is a proportion of people who say they're MGTOW that are only MGTOW because they don't have access to Puniti and they never had access to Puniti. Yeah, it's just I, cope, right? I don't think that that's in dispute. I think that that's pretty legitimate. Yeah, so Think Before You Sleep is the actual poster child, like on a National Geographic fundraiser to stop like rickets in Africa. Instead, it's to stop, you know men changing their beliefs because they get no pussy people di- dudes dying of no pussy and it's a picture of think before you sleep right before he started dating britney venti he's just like you could change the life of a sub 21 bmi white californian today donate look, there- to help this bitch boy get some pussy <laughs> look there there are plenty of filipinas and uh latinas that can will totally go for him so that's not in dispute yeah but no, it's, it's not. Hey, did you did you Sam man? Did you watch that entire uh, whatever podcast that they? I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, it's I a watched hard the film, first brother. I watched the first 15, 20 minutes, and then I think there was a scene where or, or she like literally like taps his back like to give him support, and I was like half like, the time. No, no. It's so like, are you giving him a dog treat at the same time? Like, I, or, like I think what, what, um, I think Hammerhand, you were with me when we reacted to that, right? Uh yes. Yeah. So I, I believe so. I think in 30 minutes of their video, I made like what five clips. <laughs> I've just been uploading them. They're like, why are you upset? All the Venti fans pop up too. Like these uh, dudes yeah. are like walking around with one hand permanently in their shorts, being off to the thought of Sid the sloth with like <laughs> double D tits. <laughs> right? And they're all they're all showing up on all these. Like, why do you post about her so much? So I'm just like, these are all clips from a lot. This is the laziest content I could make. The laziest content I can make is me just doing a like, well, like an hour and a half 
stream talking shit about someone with Hammerhand and I just press record and stop record at random intervals. Even the titles don't make sense most of the time. They're like, you didn't talk, you didn't talk about this at all. I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I'm so lazy, Sam, man. When I clip my live streams and I go back to upload them as segments and I choose a title, I don't even watch the video I'm about to upload as a segment to put the right title on. That's how fucking lazy I am about this YouTube wow, game, look, bro. It, once you do this long enough, you're just like, what's today's title? I don't know. I'm just going to like randomly type something out. Okay, good. Maybe. <laughs> yep. Like, that's that's the point I've gotten to now. I'm like, will this get a people's eyeball? It's like, usually it's like, if, if there's a, a, a white single mother with a black child, that automatically gets a lot of views. So, you know, you can just put that in a thumbnail or, you know, there's, there, you know, there's little things that people just kind of like, oh, look, let's laugh at that woman. Okay. And then that'll get views. It's kind now, of it's kind of I ridiculous. Two topics. Hammerhand can attest to this. They get a ton of views. Although Hammerhand, Hammerhand put out a video the other day. It was something about like women hate you or something like that, and it got oh. thirty thousand views in six hours. I was like, what the fuck? Is this? Like, that one just popped off for no reason. Um, yeah. I think I think honestly, the algo reads the thumbnails. Mm, so yes. I, I really think that the algo pushed that based on the thumbnail and it was a misunderstanding with the algo mm. like i get i get a lot of views on the memes of the week video segments and Those people are love good yeah they're good because uh you know like I've, i filter it down and pick the best ones but it's it's also the fact that when you go through those, it's so quick, right? Like it's I'm not I'm not lingering on any one topic for very long. So it's like you're watching 25 little tiny videos that are shorts in one long video. And I think people's attention span, like the especially younger generations, just keeps going and going and going. So now, you need to keep changing things up quick. Now they got a they got a tool. I gotta try it out in the future, Sam. And it's called Descript. It's an AI tool that you can upload like that video to. And it will go through and clip and segment out each of the different topics. So you upload that and then yeah. you put it in there. You get 25 shorts. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, what's going to happen eventually is uh, the AI is just going to do most of the work for us anyway. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. when it comes to work, you know, this is interesting. I think um, Hammerhand, this is a – it's weird. Because Hammerhand, this is more of a mission to win. But sometimes Hammerhand – your YouTube channel is a nice little, um, uh, like, bonus every year, right? Uh, in what way? What do you mean? Monetarily. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. And Sam, man, I kind of view you as the same. I know you got a couple other gigs you're doing in investments, and please don't talk about Bitcoin, because <laughs> last time <laughs> you guys talked about Bitcoin, I literally muted my mic and went to get lunch. Um but this isn't like you're not wholly dependent on money you get from YouTube. No. So it's no, look, like look, I, I took I took the money that I made back when I was monetized and when I was getting cryptocurrencies and I invested it well. Yep. So, I, you know, and, and look, we're getting to the point now where you're not going to be able to get ahead in life unless you have some kind of financial assets because you know, everyone's just falling further and further behind. Like the cost of living is just insane. Yeah. So, so um. Basically, so what work, I'm trying to say is if Hammer for, go on, go, go on, Simon. No, just working for a living is is for suckers, and it's going to get worse and worse. And you know, when you, when you hear young guys are like, "What do I do? I'm 25. I'm covered in zits. What do I do with my life?" It's like, uh, dude, like you got to move to another country, or you need to like, you need to figure out some business idea and hustle that no one is tapped into yet. Like you, ha it's like. You know, I don't like Andrew Tate, but he says one thing. He says, like, you can't – an average man can no longer make it in this world. You have to be above average just to have a normal middle-class existence at this point. Well, I mean, think about what the average man is. There, Like, there is no average man. There's swaths of men who right now – like, probably there's probably a 100 dudes – no, there's probably a couple thousand dudes since we started this live stream. I started it 40 minutes ago. That popped a little blue pill called fentanyl, right? <laughs> The middle class is done. You're either a drug addict in a grave, poor, you know, like wasting your money on bullshit, or you're living in the suburbs. Yeah. Well, you know, Dave Ramsey gives you good advice, bro. Just get your bootstraps up, boy. Hammerhand, we roasted Dave Ramsey so hard. When I go onto an incognito tab or I use Linux <laughs> to go to Google and I type in Undead Chronic or Hammerhand, the top, like what, it, now it's like the second for the long time with the top suggested next word was Dave Ramsey. Yes, I know. 
I know they tried <laughs> to block my video, and I had to appeal that. Uh, it was it was Dave Ramsey's team that tried to block that video. Yeah, they're trying to cock block you, bro. But yeah, yep. he's getting sued for some call. Anyhow, what I, I think, Sam, I, the the advice to young men would be: you want to get you're poor, or get any puniti? No. Is that why you want to live alone? Yes. Like the dudes want to live alone, so they get puniti. Well, you're not getting puniti. You're poor. Do you have a family member you can move in with and save some money and invest it so you're not poor? And if you okay, want so puniti ten years from now, you can move in. I'll give you a case. So this guy uh, requested a video. He's 29. He lives in Toronto. He's making forty five thousand dollars a year working at the grocery store. Right. He he's <clears> tapped <throat> out his his top earnings potential. He can't become a manager because it's too difficult for him. So he's he's at that level. So he's making close to fifty thousand a year. He's living with his dad. He has no savings. He's 29 and he doesn't know what to do with his life. How the fuck are you living at home? Which I, I'm not casting any shade at all. How are you living at home and you're, you don't have anything saved and you're making 50, well, okay. 50 grand. He, well, he's, he's spending money, uh, going to the gym. He's spending like 500 bucks a week on food. I don't know what, or like, like a lot of money on meat and like proteins. He's like trying to like body max and all this kind of stuff. So you can, you know, but here's the thing, like out of that four, just under 4,000, let's say 3,700 a month, like, let's say he wanted to get his own place, a place in, in Toronto in the area is it's running insane. around 28, 2,900 a month, right? Yeah, so it's after insane. tax, he would be spending a hundred percent of his income for a one bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, it's, it's so there's no, there's no, there's no escape at this situation, right? So he can live with his dad and he can save money, but I don't know he's not saving money. Obviously he should That's be what saving I'm saying. something. So where the fuck is he the money be, going? He should be saving at least like 500, 600, 700 a month. At he's least saving right? fucking everything. If you were if spending, you're in that position, right, here, here's, you save what I, everything. Here, here's what I got to say about that. Maybe he's paying, maybe he's giving his dad some money for rent. If, That's if a possibility. He, if he is spending all of his disposable income on high quality protein, he should be within a year or two jacked enough to make a lot more money flexing on Instagram. So if he doesn't have the discipline to he's hit too the gym short, the right times, he's, like five and he's still buying that high five. quality meat. He should just switch over to whey protein. I've done Dude, it. He, he's got. He's. I. I saw his YouTube channel, and he's not. He's not. Let's just say he's not a perfect specimen like you. Are. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So look, it's it's unfortunate, right? Like not everyone is as blessed as the zombie king over there, right? So you know we have to we have to work with what we're given. So I told him, look, there's there's a few possibilities. Like you could go and he could teach English in Japan or South Korea, make money and live cheaply over there. He also thought about going and working on a cruise ship. Not a bad idea. They cover your room and board. Sure, you're going to make less money, but you get to uh, keep more of the money. Plus, you get to meet more interesting people than the women in Toronto, which you're not going to have a relationship uh, with anyway. Wait, so, Hammerhand, Hammerhand, let me let me say two words, and I want your initial reaction, like your gut yeah. reaction to this. Toronto women. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean. Have you actually been up here? Jesus Christ. Um, no, we've been just this side of the uh, Il Notre Dame. I went to oh, Toronto Montreal? for three yeah, days Montreal. for a conference like five years ago. Even five years, well, five years ago, even like, I would say even 20, but five years ago, same man, the entire time I was there, I didn't know you were living in Toronto then, but I was just like, oh my God, it's even <laughs> some of these bitches up here. I'm like, they should just give them American citizenships because they got the dyed hair and they're 400 pounds. That's good enough. Well, yeah, well I mean, look, when I think invent- about, go ahead. No, they invented slot walk. So what does that tell you? Right, exact Amundo. When I think about Toronto bitches, I think about New York bitches. It's the same thing. Well, no, New York New York ones are attractive. You go down to the financial district, <sighs> packing district. Like they're skinny. They all look blonde. They're all trying to land their banker buddy, right? Like, yeah, but everybody yeah. knows that game, man. Everybody <laughs> knows knows what that's about. So, look, I, I have a theory on the whole. I have a, the Chad slot machine. So women. They go and they basically oh, go to the love Chad this Casino. <laughs> they go to the Chad Casino, <laughs> and all the Chads are lined up like like slot machines. And they just, <laughs> you know, instead of instead of a you know the handle, there's a cock, and they just like shove the cock down, and they ho- and they're just waiting for the sound. <laughs> they're, hearing, bloop, 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 bloop. they're hearing that sound, and it's like hypnotizing, and they're just waiting for the jackpot to come out, which is the commitment and the marriage. So they're all playing a constant game of Chad, right? They're just 
yanking the cocks down, hoping that eventually, and today, you know, um, one of my longtime supporters, Fat Cat says, oh, you know, my, my, my uh, husband, he, he was, I considered him a Chad when I met him and he slept with me and it was a one night stand. I thought that was it. And that was okay with me. And then he called me back and I was shocked. Right. So when you hear stories about women having their one night stands, they're, they're hoping that that guy will say that guy will somehow fall for them. So they're thinking they're playing the Chad game, right? They're playing the numbers game when it comes to Chad, hoping that eventually one of them just kind of falls for them. Now yeah, there's different. Now the thing about slot machines is anyone can use them, right? Uh, yes. Now, when it comes to like card games, like even black, I've seen some blackjack tables where like if you're not, if you don't pass the credit check, if you don't buy enough chips, you're not allowed at certain tables because the buy-in is pretty high. Yeah. Same thing with the Chad slot machines. If you look like Brittany Venti, you're not going to go to the Chads of like Chris Hemsworth. You're not going to go to the Chads at, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but. Well, he might get drunk and he might have a, a weak point, right? You know, it might be time for closing time. He didn't meet no, the woman no, no. he wanted. Look, look, look. Brittany Venti's <laughs> two most redeeming qualities are. We know what they are. And they're rapidly in the chest, so there you go. <laughs> losing the fight against gravity. Chesticles. Yeah. She, it, 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 when you get to a certain level of chaddom, which I'm not saying I'm at this level, um, you, you can't be a four in the face. You got to be at least a six, you know what I mean? Like they, they they can get that picky. So she goes over to the, I don't say, I would say the sucker casino, and she finds the, she finds the one machine that's guaranteed to win. You know that machine's every called? time. Think before you sleep. Well, what I, that's what I said. You know, kind of at the beginning of this, I think that it was a concerted effort. Is she look? She, this is the kind of bitch that he thought her in particular that can she can find somebody anywhere. Why would she choose him? Look, I've got I've got sticks, hex, and hammers, old fling chasing me right now. No fucking way. <laughs> no, th- no, no think about this guy. Think about this, guys. Think about this. Sticks, hex, and hammer, who looks like. I gutted a pregnant Impala and put a wig <laughs> on the fetus. Okay. His old fling is does is like who I'm gonna chase now that sticks isn't with me. I know who I'm gonna try to get to fall in love with me. One of the top MGTOW content creators of all time. Like you stupid un- bi- Wait, wait, where is it? Wait, 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 she wait, wait, knows who clip. you are though. Let me play the clip. Where what do you mean? She, she she doesn't know who I am. She knows uh, like she you know, my YouTube channel and Twitter and yeah that okay. that's all she knows. Oh, I don't have the clip anymore. I gotta I, I gotta get like the the video clips that Hammerhands use. But I used to have one where it was basically from Breaking Bad. <laughs> Walt White says, "You <laughs> stupid bitch." <laughs> it's literally how I feel about that. I gotta give you that. It's so stupid. That's but hey, guys, crazy, let, man. Let me let me go grab the rest of my um, beverages. You guys fill the space for the next couple of minutes, okay? Absolutely. absolutely. Sounds good. So, my friend, what's it like uh, over there in Canada? Well, right now the weather's nice. You know, as soon as the it? weather starts getting cold, I'm going to be, like, in pain again, so I don't like this. So, Are you sure weather. it's nice, or is it misogynistic weather? Is the air conditioning too cold? I'm just curious. Well, they're, they're, they're coming for our homes now because apparently, you know, there's this thing called the green belt that they put around the cities to limit development. And uh, because of that, there's no affordable housing. They just let a million people in last year into Canada, and they're like, there's nowhere to live. And it's like, there's homeless people everywhere. There, there's meth heads everywhere. The violence rate is just <laughs> shooting up through the roof. And Trudeau is now like ready to come out as gay, probably. So this is, hey, this oh, is what you knew like. that that was going to happen, man. I mean, that, that's the next logical step after the old lady hits the fucking streets. So yeah, I, I thought I thought it was like with the whole Barbie thing because him there. I saw him with some some dude at the going to the Barbie movie, and I'm like, who's that? And it's like, oh, that's his son. Okay, apparently, I'm like, okay, so he's mm. he. Oh. Uh. So this is just it's it's brutal. I don't think you know. Obviously, he's not going to get reelected at this point, but it's you, about you, time. You never know. You know, I, I, Canadians you are stupid. To They're going to vote for him again. They're going to vote need- for him again. Like too many liberals. I just. You know, you 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 see it and hear it all over here, especially in the West Coast, Portland, yeah. Oakland. You know, there's a whole bunch of shit going on over in Oakland in California right now. It's just it's absurd 
what is going on out here in these liberal shitholes. And they keep reelecting these people. Yes. What this do is you exactly. get out of this? You know, look, they, they want things to fail so they can bring in communism. That's what they want. Of course. Of course. Like and right now know. they're saying, oh, you need to, you need to confiscate people's homes to build apartment buildings. Like, okay, you're talking about taking, literally just government coming in and taking homes. Probably they do it all the time. Compensate. Well, yeah, Internet but domain, right? Yeah, so this is just, but no, like here, like they'll they'll build a subway station, and then they'll be like, okay, we've rezoned the area now; we can sell the homes for more. So why not do that? Why not build more subway stations <clears> and just rezone, and then like so, because if if somebody's offering me double the price of the house, then I can sell the house and buy two houses, right? So do that if you want. If you want more property, just rezone, and people will start selling their properties to developers, and then develop. But they don't want that. They, I know. They don't want. I know how we. I know how we fix the U.S. national debt hammerhand. No, tell me, I'm listening. <sighs> okay, crazy idea. But what's the most profitable real estate? Is it commercial, residential? I think residential, right? The beachfront. Okay. Beach well, front. now it is. Sure. Okay. Here's the plan. We roast Brittany Venti to such a degree she cries so much that the space between her eyes can legally be declared a beachfront property. And then we take all the refugees from Maui and we resettle them on the space between her eyes. And then the government gives us like billions of dollars. You know what? Fuck it. Let's give Ukraine the space between her eyes. Oh, geez. Speaking of Ukraine, you guys heard the news about Gonzalo Lira, Coach Red Pill? Uh, yeah, unless there's new news. Didn't he go to Hungary? Well, he, he made a video saying that he was going to Hungary before he escaped the Ukrainian. And then, and then get this, he didn't like try to cross the border in the woods or the river or something. You know, he like went to the border crossing after he told everybody that he was going to escape to Hungary. What and then they're like, what? look, you know what most likely happened? Go ahead. It's like, this is the equivalent. Hammerhand, me and you are going to play a chest game, but mm -hmm. we're going to do five moves each. Mm -hmm. on one video right so like this chess game goes over two years and in between my our game or our moves i'm gonna put up videos telling my fans exactly what i'm gonna do <laughs> <laughs> you're subbed to me and you're look like <laughs> didn't the so what happened did the sbu pick him up of course they did they probably Again. had a they probably had a tag on his clothing or they like a geo tag or like the first thing i okay that was this is what i would have done if i was it first of all i would have if they release me from jail and say, or well, you're going to have to come back in a week. Okay. First thing I would do is go and buy whole new clothing, get rid of all my old shit, get rid of my phone. If I'm going to cry, if I'm really going to escape, I need to make sure there's no way for them to track me. I'll get a whole bunch of cash. I'll have clothes. And then I'll just make a run for the border. I'll, I'll, I'll go in the middle of the night across the border. They won't have any way to, to know it's me. And, and then I would have, like, when I got to Hungary and got asylum, then I would tell everyone, hey, I'm in Hungary. I've got asylum. I'm, I'm, I'm free now. Like, he's why, why, how, fucking, can you not think, how can you not think that far ahead? Like, I don't he's understand. He's fucking so stupid, stupid, man. Yes, I mean, yes. Look, hey, hey, after but, the Daily Beast sold his ass out, an American publication sold him out to the SBU. You figure that that's your clue to get the fuck out. Like, Hey, There's but, a whole uh, series speak. of stupid things. Like, why do you go to Ukraine and attack the Ukrainian government in the middle of a war in their own country? Are you insane? Like, Spe Speaking of stupid people, there's two extremely stupid people attacking our next guest. Uh -oh. Brittany Venti and Lauren Southern have declared war on a Rolo Tomasi. I'm sorry if I <laughs> call you rolled up Tamali. Welcome to the show, Rolo Tomasi. How you doing, man? Well, you're live. I'm not sure if your mic's set up, but uh, Rolo's in the stream yards at least. Sir. That's all right. Let's, let's, let's continue dunking on Coach Red Pill until he shows up. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Oh, what's up, man? Oh, we can hear you. One, two, one, two. Hang on. Can you guys hear me? Because I can hear you. Yeah, yeah we, we can you. hear you. Yes. Do I need to email him? I'll put it in the private chat. We can... Hear you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're good, yeah, man. we got you. Because I, I am not getting any audio from you guys. Hang on one sec. Finally, Hammerhand. Someone joins my show and makes it so I'm not the number one audio. So 
There you go. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment for a lifetime, Sandman. <laughs> Yeah, last month I was streaming off a shitty laptop with a twenty dollar mic from um, Walmart, and I told everybody this like months in or like a month in advance, and there was just at the top comments were like, "Why does your mic suck so bad, Chronic? I gave you twenty bucks yesterday. Can't you use it to buy a new mic?" <laughs> you bitches do not appreciate the fact I'm like <laughs> live streaming after I go shark fishing for eight hours. Oh man, they don't care. Uh oh, he disappeared. He's, he'll change it up. I'll keep an eye on the stream yards. So um, we'll, we'll keep on talking about Coach Red Pill, and then we'll switch over to uh I just Venti don't understand. I, I don't understand the thing with, with Lyra. I mean, I, I get wanting to be dedicated to something, but not when your life is on the line. He, the grift must have paid. Like, to be honest, like, he's originally he started as some sort of financial advisor guy back in – you know, the, back about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. And that didn't really yeah. work for him. Then he did the whole coach red pill thing until he was demonetized. And then he and then he went to Ukraine to do that. And so he's just moving from one thing to the next. He does not commit it to any one idea. Well, how often do we hear that in this space? Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Here's, it's here's the fucking pipeline. depressing. Here's the pipeline what it when is. it comes to that. It's it's kind of like um Dudes will be like anti SJW to make some gaming content, like doesn't get anything, and then suddenly those dudes or new people, I'm MGTOW, MGTOW this, MGTOW that, MGTOW, my left nut is MGTOW, and it beat up my right nut, and now my right nut is MGTOW too. They stay Shit. away from each other now. It's like, whatever. And they go from MGTOW to, they drop the end as soon as it gets one, one little strike. On their YouTube channel, they drop the MGTOW, they drop the M, they say they're leaving the Manosphere, and they go into relationship coaching. They go into, I'm just my own thing kind of deal. And then once they get more pressure from that, they go, um, I'm a Christian now. I'm a moderate now. I, 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 I do this now. It's just pathetic. Uh, let's turn on that again. Sounds a lot like Sarah Moore, man. Can you guys hear me now? <clears throat> yes, sir. I mean, I, we heard okay. you the first time, man. I, I, I wasn't getting any audio on your end, that's all. That's all good. That's all good. What's up? How are you doing? Hey, good. Long time coming. You've had yes, uh, no, uh, I was telling I was telling my show that I think we've been I think there's been like a couple months ago you said you'd be down to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of been back and forth, like, oh I'll be talk I'll be down to talk to Rolo. I'd be down and you'd be like, Yeah, no crack, whatever. But then this whole um shit show exploded. <laughs> like Rolo <laughs> Rolo uh -huh. went to a porta potty. And um, you know, after he was done, after he was done using it, he's like, I don't even have to flush it. But for some reason, it just as he usually closed the door, it exploded and landed on his leg. He's like, "What the <laughs> fuck is that?" <laughs> that porta potty is Brittany Venti's face. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I I uh, I did a full stream on this uh, just like yesterday. I did a little bit just now with some of the guys. Um, but uh, I mean, it's so just, what happened? Well, okay. So you have to go back in time a little bit. The uh, the first time I was um approach well, approach i got emailed by uh, lauren southern's uh ex-husband back in december of last year and this is the fed yeah the fed the, the the alleged fed he's not really a fed he's a government contractor there's a big difference between him and a fed. Uh, she I called see. him james bond chad so yeah well <laughs> don't believe a word that comes out of her mouth um so he hit me up and was asking me if, um, if I knew anybody in the law profession who could help him with this sort of parental alienation thing that he was having with Lawrence Southern. So well, he, well, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's okay. Christ, he, he was, uh, he was. So he's having this. He had this ongoing custody battle between himself and Lawrence Southern, and apparently, apparently, they had split up like about six months prior. And he was in Australia and she's in Canada. And I, he just wanted to know, like I was the only person he knew that knew of her and that I might know some people who are like attorneys or, or people who could help him out like uh, it, legally uh, to uh, get custody of his kid because she basically more or less has kidnapped his son. Mm. And so he's not, you know, he, she's got, they got a protection order and all this other bullshit. Uh, long story short, so he, he hits me up and asks me um, for like the, some names of like some people like um, 
like the old, the old the name that came to mind was like uh, uh, Andrew Esquire from from Legal Mindset, and I I didn't know it's out of my wheelhouse, right? I don't know too much about that, but I know people who do. So I told him I'd help him out, and in the course of our conversations since like December of last year, uh, you know, he's telling me what you know what went down between the two of them, and I'm trying to you know I'm trying to be sympathetic and listen to you know re read his his emails and stuff. So we had this back and forth. And then Andrew Tate gets uh, arrested right around the 29th of, of December. And uh, in the wake of all that, you have like uh, all these people coming out of the woodwork uh, talking about who Andrew Tate had uh, sort of as, you know, coming out to visit him. Like Leah Halpern was mentioned in that. Uh, um, uh, Lauren Southern was mentioned in that. Uh, and uh, Michaela Peterson. You yes, I was, I was about to guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, but Michaela yeah, Peterson yeah, going to yeah, go. That was, that was a, that's a pretty easy connect, though. I mean, that's, the, that's the, the pictures are there. So everybody knows. Yeah. That. But we didn't do nothing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I got a but question. So, I got a question. So I, I got a okay, go question ahead. for you, uh, Rollo. Mm -hmm. um, Michaela Peterson's medication list got leaked in 2016, showing that she was on mm -hmm. herpes medication. <laughs> well, the leaked you, by her. <laughs> yeah, the question is yeah, by her. <laughs> yeah, let me just you know break all the HIPAA. Although I don't know what Canada has, but do yeah. you think? And this isn't a roast on either side. I'm just this is an interesting question. Do you mm -hmm. think Michaela Peterson gave Andrew Tate herpes? Or did Andrew Tate give Michaela Peterson her piece? That's what I'm trying to find out. That's a, that's right. a, that's a, uh, okay. Speculation. I couldn't say. I do know that that was one like one of the uh, the the meds she was on that she claimed that the meat diet had cle had cleansed her system of was sure. a was a herpes a herpes medicine. That, so she would have had herpes of some sorts. Um, I yeah, I've seen that <laughs> list. And by the way, she put that out there. It wasn't like leaks. She put it out there because she was claiming that she had a. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, she'd been cured of all of these things or having to take all of these medicines because she's on an all meat diet. And one of those was, uh, uh, I forget the name of it. It starts with a V or something like that. Vivance, she, one of, ADHD, yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. One of those, one of those was, uh, was a, a, a herpes medication, <laughs> herpes medication. Oh no. Uh, the I, herpes was valcyclovir, but she was also yeah. on like basically a methamphetamine substitute Vivance. Yeah. I, which Lauren ate, hey, maybe Lauren Southern. And Michaela Peterson could talk about how they're both on methamphetamines derivatives. They both broke up with their husbands, and they're both single mothers. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh my god! It just, it, it well, you know why? You know why they? You, you, well, you know why they get along together so well. Uh, they have they have similar they have they similar histories. They both do. I was going to say there is a, the connection between them and Tate. Now, here's the thing: is uh, right around, um, gosh, I think it was 2020. Um, there was actually an article in the Atlantic written about uh, Tommy Robbins and uh, and Lauren Southern uh -oh. because they were doing that documentary together. And I don't even know what the fuck it was about. But uh, during the course of that article, it mentioned a guy who matches the description of uh, Andrew Tate. Uh, I later had that confirmed by her ex-husband that it was indeed Andrew Tate. Um, again, this is his word. I'm taking this on an email. So it's not like something I'm just going to like go out there and blurt out. But then Tommy Robbins, after the Tates had been arrested, mentioned, mentioned exactly that. And so he confirmed it. And then, um, and then he also confirmed that he had had, a, an ongoing relationship with, um, Lauren Southern as well while she was over there. And remember Jesus Tommy, Tommy, Tommy God. Robbins is, Tommy Robbins is married at this time. So, so it, she's it, basically fucking a married man. It sounds like. Lauren Southern is a sloot. I've believed this ever since I started my channel. Hammerhand, do you think she's a sloot? I think she owes Sandman an apology. Yeah, so I say oh, this yeah. because... For, for, um, for, her, for her suing of me. I'm not attempt. sure if you're aware of this, Rolo, but Lauren Southern was threatening to sue Sandman, and Sandman is hardcore MGTOW. He lives in Canada, which is like California. And if he had to go to court... We all know he would have been doxxed, and he'd be having to deal with people throwing bricks at his head every day. So, mm -hmm. Lawrence, uh, Salmon, how about you tell uh, Rolo just, like, the, the synopsis of what went down there? No, she was going into retirement, and then I made a video. There was an article that came out about her. I think it was through um, Milo. He had said some things, and mm -hmm. I just repeated what was being said. I didn't, uh, I didn't really say anything that hadn't been said already. Mm -hmm. And then out of the blue, she came back out of retirement and then she sent me a message or two. I didn't see the messages. I, I just didn't see them. And then the next message I saw was like, hey, if you don't take this down, my legal team is coming after you. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, I'm like, and then I took the video down mm -hmm. and then and then I told everybody about it. 
And then she like literally lost her mind because I told everybody that, that she'd asked me to take it down and I did what she wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like she I'm the bad guy for taking something down that you wanted me to take down. But oh, but I just told everybody that was the bad part. You know, I shouldn't have told anybody because that yeah. makes you look bad. It's like, oh, yeah. Whatever. Well, I got I got I have a similar story for you then. Um, Let's hear so it. as it, as it progressed, I, I mean, I had this ongoing sort of like back and forth with her ex-husband. And, you know, I was trying to keep it as private as possible. Like he told me, he says, you know, keep this under your hat. You're the only person I know who knows her, who know, might know, you know, someone in the legal system. And I, you know, because I've done pieces on parental alienation and stuff before. I had no reason to believe that this guy wasn't who he said he was. I mean, he gave me, I, he, I connected with him on WhatsApp. I have his phone number. Um, so I know the guy actually exists. Uh, and I got his, I mean, right now, is, I, I don't see why I can't say his name. It's Aaron McCready. So. Um, so he was a government contractor and apparently her, uh, ADHD and her sort of like mental illness combined, you know, uh, combined with the fact that he has a government contract and she said she wanted to be a trad wife and she really, really didn't. She really wants to stay in the scene. And a lot of the stuff about like, like her personal history, according to him, I'm, this is not me, this is third party, right? saying that you know she basically uh, will go with whoever is the the bigger who has the most cl the most clout like you know how they say a, a, a woman can be a gold digger she's a clout digger right yeah, so it's Rolo like was destiny wait, involved wait, wait, wait. in this conversation Rolo, yeah, yeah, Rolo. yeah well uh, yeah later on he was but Rolo, oh, that, 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 Rolo that kind heard, of proves I, I've seen on Twitter I've seen all these beautiful young traditional conservative women saying hypergamy <laughs> doesn't exist <laughs> Are you telling me, Rolo, that Lauren Southern was hypergamous? <laughs> she was most definitely. I mean, I guess that would fit the bill. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the, the thing is, it's like, so I'm, I'm talking to him throughout the year. And then um, I notice her making a lot of appearances on Tim Pool. And uh, at one point, I noticed she was still wearing her wedding ring on Tim Pool. And I was having a conversation with her ex-husband and she's, he mentioned, she says, she still wears my wedding ring because she's still trying to keep up appearances about like being this sort of trad, you know, trad wife, trad mom kind of thing. Like she's still, like she's still married. She, she never made any statement that she wasn't married or that she was going through a divorce or anything like that whatsoever up until that point, right? And so I actually put one kind of throwaway tweet out there. I, I screen capped her hand with the um, with her you know with her wedding ring on, and I said, "Why is Lauren Southern still wearing a wedding ring?" That's all I put. That's all the tweet said, and it's it was this landslide of people who were just like, "Well, what are you what are you saying? What are you what are you intimating? What do you you know?" Like people came at me like, "What do you think you know?" Blah blah blah. And I'm just like, "I'm just saying she's been divorced for a while, and and she hadn't made it public, and I was the one who actually sort of broke the fact that she was she was actually not married, and so she had to come clean about that at some point." And so I, I put that out there and I think she probably figured out that I knew something, right? I've been talking to someone. It was most likely, you know, like her, her ex, right? So I knew she'd been, uh, she'd been divorced at that time, probably about 18 months, maybe a year and a half. And I put that out there and then lo and behold, right around like the beginning of June is when she had her kind of like, uh, you know, come to Jesus, you know, I'm coming clean about my divorce sitting video in the wood, talking, yeah. sitting in the words talking. And so she has this big kind of like heartfelt, oh, I've been going through so much and I got divorced and da, da, da. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, well, she's saying that because she knows that I know that she's been divorced for a while. She knows that I have been talking to somebody. And it's just a matter of time before it come, comes out public. So um, and I, I can, I got, I have some uh, emails I read on my show just yesterday. I'll be happy to read them for you guys too, if you'd like, but, oh, uh, but they were from, but they're from, uh, they're from uh, her ex-husband, you know, explaining the situation and right around April, uh, like prior to this, right around April, um, they, I, I noticed uh, somebody sent me a link to Chud Logic. Who were oh, saying something no. effect about oh, hey, yeah. 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 I, okay. he was, I, I, he was I mentioning he was mentioning that there was some sort of ongoing or there had been an affair or some kind of relationship between Lauren Southern and Destiny. And I was like, holy shit. So yeah, I looked this up because because Destiny had been coming by that point, Destiny had been coming at me pretty regularly. Real quick why aside, I don't know, real but. quick aside, um, before I get to Destiny. So Chud Logic I had a debate with him, I think what was it, guys, two years ago? Roughly. Mm -hmm. 
And um, we got to the point where he started flexing on me that he had kids. And I'm like, oh, well, do they live with you? Are you married? He's like, no, mm-hmm. they live with their mother. And then I just recited the stats I have. I know by memory about single mothers and their kids and how likely they are to get graped and such. I got like a two minute clip of him screaming at me. And ever since then, he's completely <laughs> changed his content to just covering other people and not doing debates. Mm-hmm. But here's here's what I'll tell you, Rolo, about Destiny and Lauren, because I kind of realized this after the fact. So I went on to Lauren's birthday stream I where she was, was drinking. Bring that up. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. My only de- my only conversation with Lauren Southern. When was this? Um, I think it was, it was about a year. a year ago. Yeah, it was a year ago. So yeah, a year to, ago. Yeah, a year ago. And, and you were asking some pretty hard hitting questions. I was surprised she stuck around. Yeah, I spent thirty. I think I spent the first thirty minutes defending you, and people were saying you lost that crime. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, there's no. Because as someone who's you, anonymous, I need to re- uh, defend you. My boy. Knew, we we knew right then and there that something was up because she was completely fucking whacked out of her mind. Yeah, so mm-hmm. the first 30 minutes I was talking about the Sandman situation, but after that, it was supposed to, I was she told me at the first, like, hey, we're gonna talk for 20 minutes. I'm like, that's cool. But she kept me on because it was a good conversation. And then she brought Destiny on. So it became a it became a 1v2, basically chronic against two bitches. Mm-hmm. And every time I defined feminism as you think women should vote, first wave feminism, mm-hmm. destiny and I called Lauren something a feminist, destiny would like joke about it. it's like oh Lauren Southern's a feminist oh you know he never thought he, he thought it was ridiculous for me to call Lauren Southern a feminist now given your timeline about them potentially dating and other people's timelines they would have been dating at that time it makes perfect sense and then mm-hmm. as soon as they broke up or whatever happened they stopped hanging out together Lauren Southern got sick of his California I can't satisfy a Swedish woman's puniti penis. Mm-hmm. He started calling Lauren Southern a feminist. And so to hmm. this day, he has not acknowledged Daddy Chronic for teaching him what fucking feminism actually means. <laughs> and given that change in his opinion, it just lines up perfectly with the fact that he got dumped by Lauren. So he's like bitter about it. But when he was with mm-hmm. her, he's like, oh, she's not a feminist. Oh, how could you? You know, the whole the whole stream, he was laughing at the fact that I was calling her a feminist. But go on. Well, they, they, uh, so. So I watched the uh, hold hold that thought real quick. I just I watched the video of uh, Chud Logic when he was talking about uh, how Destiny and Lauren had some kind of I, I don't know I don't even know what to describe it, but he was he was actually very hesitant to even like bring it up. I think in in that stream that I saw, and remember this is around like April of this year, like the beginning of April, and. I was watching this and I'm like, there's really something between the two of them. So I had to kind of look it up and I looked at some of the videos of this time, like last year, and they were spending a lot of time together. I mean, they were doing a lot of like tag team videos and they're doing a lot of, you know, uh, you know how he does. He brings some chick in there and that sits next to him and he, they yuck it up for a little while, but he did more with her. Like he would go take her out to like, uh, out, he actually went outside, right? <laughs> he would go outside and, and, uh, <laughs> And do like they would go to some protest or they would go to some something and he was tagging along kind of thing. And it was like it was really kind of cringe, to be honest. But like when I was looking at it, I go, yeah, there's probably something going on between them. And then Chud, I watched Chud Logic again. And he said that there was like everybody knew it, but nobody wanted to talk about the fact that that Destiny had been basically banging Lauren Southern and that there had been some it had gotten so such, to such a point that it threatened their open marriage between I mean, Destiny and Melina. Now, this is Chud let's, Logic let's be honest this about, isn't me. Let's yeah. be honest about Destiny and his sexual prowess. They could have had a relationship, mm-hmm. but maybe Melina got jealous of Lauren because yeah. Destiny was watching Lauren Southern get banged by a bunch of black guys in L.A. Well, that was that was a I don't know anything about that, but I do I do figure. Well, I'm gonna say he's he's a confirmed cuckold, so like oh that 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 I know transferring the cuck nature onto his relationship with Lauren. Yeah, well, that I know, but the other thing is like I I think you would probably have to really be invested in another person to really be that threatening to an open relationship that that they're very proud about, right? So that's, when I was listening to Ch- when I was when I was listening to Chud Logic, I'm like, they must have had something a little bit more serious than just sort of like, oh, I'm going to go meet some bitch somewhere and I'm going to bang her off a Tinder and I'm going to go and come back to my wife kind of thing. And um, so I started looking into it. And so I'll, I'll just read this to you. Actually, uh, during that time, I, I had this exchange with uh, with her ex-husband. 
And uh, I said, I said, uh, hey, uh, we, we had uh, some talk about the legal affairs of his, his kid and his, his uh, lawsuit. And I said, I also have recently been watching some interesting videos about Lauren having an affair with Destiny. I said, is there any truth to this? If so, was it in any way related to your divorce and parental alienation? Any detail, I'm reading this verbatim from what I said to him. Uh, details, any details might help me and, uh, and the guy that, the, the lawyer that I was working with, uh, get your son back that much quicker. Because uh, so, I was thought, hey, maybe this is some way to sort of get your kid back. Because if you can prove this sort of like pattern of, inconsistency and you could say she's an unfit mother it makes it a whole lot easier to get you know to get that at least to get visitation rights because he didn't even have fucking visitation at that point so then he gets back to me and he says this okay so I, this is directly from her ex he says uh first you know happy easter blah blah, blah. thank you for your interest and inquiry it's uh, much appreciated as i do i will attempt to uh keep this very succinct about this time last year there was a strong suspicion some evidence that Lauren was pregnant with a girl that was Destiny's. So that's where this is coming from. I don't like to pull this out of my ass and make shit up. This is where this came from. I asked her very politely and respectfully, in which case she emotionally exploded, not actually confirming or denying my question in the end. We have not spoken since. It was actually the last time I spoke to her. So the last time they had a conversation was when she was at least in some having an affair with with Destiny, right? Mm -hmm. uh, conse consequently, I have taken it uh, as his, at this as this did occur, as it didn't uh, as a simple yes or no response would have sufficed. A very sad state of affairs, really. Noting, I do not know what happened to the child. Mm -hmm. So that this, by the way, I read this part on my it. stream back in well, like yesterday, but also in I, I, this is like the probably the third time I've read this, right? Back in June. So I read this actually on my 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 stream about her stream back in June. He said this then: I am now of the understanding she is currently seeing Tim Pool, which mm. is not a surprise as I think she needs him to. Uh, to commercially survive at the moment. No, it no. Does this goes. This goes. Goddamn. Pardon my language. Hand in hand with that shit that she came out with when she showed back up talking about Republican and Christian grooming circles and trying to rebrand herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, well, remember that's okay. So this is this is April eighth to uh, twenty twenty three. So that's a, this year on April eighth. And then she says, uh, which is no surprise since I think she needs him to be commercially viable at the moment. Uh, it does it does mean she is in the U.S. a fair bit and my son with her parents. I'm actually glad my son is with her parents for now because they are pretty decent people. Now, let's Ro let me let me respond to that. She needs to be commercially viable because she's de uh, in her own video of 45 minutes sitting on a suspiciously knobbed tree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she she said she was like super poor and living in a trailer park. Sandman, let me let me let me pass it over to you. Lauren Southern, who has gotten millions of views while fully monetized, showing her tatas with a Patreon and a PayPal for years before the social media clampdown happened. What did she do with all her money, Sandman? What, what, I don't what know. Happened? Like I I heard there was like six or ten bitcoin too i don't know where that went either mm -hmm. so there's you know we, she's probably saved something even if it's like 10 or 20 percent of what she made but what, what are they good at they're good at spending other people's money and saving theirs but here, here's the thing like if, if the whole tim pool thing is true she she wants attention more than anything else right yeah, so yeah yeah that's uh, let me let me finish this that this is more to that point this is rollo lauren is damaged is a damaged wreck of a person that is obsessed with trying to be famous at all costs. This is why I left her, as I don't need to put up with a woman that I uh, like that. I'm within my context. Uh, I'm within the context of what I do, successful enough to be quite financially secure and with a great and adventurous li uh, international lifestyle, uh, born from hard work, of course. Of course. I would love to be, I would love one day to share this great life with my son and provide him with a life uh, example that is much needed. In any case, I do not need to put up with such behavior from a partner since, uh, hence I left her. She does, however, absolutely hate me for leaving her as it has wounded her pride significantly as well as disrupted her Christian conservative brand. 
As I stated, I will need you to refrain from revealing uh, me uh, as there is uh, sensitive legal matters around contact with her colleague or with her colleagues slash industry, which could affect uh, contact with my son. I hope you understand uh, and are on guard for this. Okay. Now, why am I saying this now? Because later he gave me permission to go public with this, but um, right but that was the um, that was the gist of that. That that exchange back on April eighth. There's more. I have some other ones so, too. But, but let's skip but forward. Just... Let's skip forward to because we know. Okay, here's the one fact that's indisputable, which makes me like treat Lauren Southern like all the people I roast in my Reddit articles and my YouTube response videos. She's a single mother, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're a single mother, there's two options. One is you chose a bad guy. Which why did you choose a bad guy? And two. You acted like such a biatch. You chased off a good guy. Single mothers mm -hmm. are cancer. They're they're like the, they're if feminism is cancer, single mothers are metastases to the brain. That's like wow. You can't ignore that. But currently, you got attacked by two of these hoes, two of these bitches. Mm -hmm. She quote unquote trolled you, Rolo. She sent you emails, fake emails. What happened mm -hmm. with that man? Okay, so let me uh, let me. Uh, move the timeline up a little bit here. So that was April of this year. Now around June, uh, I think it was June 9th is when uh, Lauren finally came out with her uh, come come clean video in the woods talking about how she was she's playing the victim card and how she had been uh, no in an was clean in her. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, <And> well, <laughs> she'd been um, she'd been going through this. She finally came clean about her divorce anyways. Right. Mm -hmm. And that she, you know, she was, she'd been wearing that. Nobody held her to held her feet to the fire about this, except for me. I was, I was the one that said, Hey, why is she wearing a wedding ring on Tim pool? Right? Um, because, and the, the only reason I even said that is because that was part of a, co a previous conversation I had with Aaron, like, like back in like February, like she, he was like, she still wears the ring that I gave her, blah, 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 trying to, you know, keep up appearances that she's still this trap. Like she's basically like, schizophrenic or bipolar or whatever the fuck but she's doing Confirm. this because she's doing this and she's not mentioning this because she wants to keep up appearances that she's actually you know married and she has a kid and every she lives this normal like sort of trad femme life and so that's why i did that but then she has that sort of come to jesus uh video out in the woods and um, so that was meant, I think to she, she the jig was up like she couldn't keep it secret anymore because clearly uh, people were, were asking questions or somebody like, you know, she had to at some point to, you know, say that she was actually in a divorce. Nobody said, why did you leave your fucking ring on for the last like, you know, 18 months, well, two years by that point. And um, so that's really, I think what prompted that video was the fact that like people were asking like uncomfortable questions. And she really realized she had to do it. But then, of course, she did it in such a way where she painted her ex as being this fed. Right. He's not a fucking fed. He just has a government fucking contracting job. Um, and then but that's but she played that up at, that up in the video and really just kind of maligned this guy. And um, and I and I <laughs> well, because the thing is, is like uh, from the conversations I've been having with Aaron uh, from December all the way up to June, I knew she was full of shit. And so uh, so I sent him this. I said, by this was my first my first uh, email to him. I said, by now, you've probably seen and read Lawrence speaking about her divorce and the child custody woes with you. I said, I'd like to get your take on all of this and ask if you're okay with me going public with your side of the story. Did something happen with your son's custody battle? Because there's, I thought something had changed when she did that because she had like this, there was an order for them not to say anything publicly about it mm. because of the ongoing custody battle at that time. So I wanted to figure out if something had happened, right? And then he said, um, I'd like to, uh, I said, I'd like to help, but I can only say what you'll allow me to. I said, I don't want to compromise your legal situation with outing her about what you've told me. I said, let me know how you want me to proceed. Right. Okay. So then he comes back to me with this. He says, uh, thank you for your email. I have only actually just got home and reconnected my devices. Just finished watching the vid quickly once through your subject title is extremely apt. It's clearly exactly that a grifter's pivot. Uh, you read, you read people pr very well. Um, and needless to say the vast majority of her points are half truths at best. And, uh, to me, many aspects are merely a cope and justification for her actions that led me to divorcing her. 
I married Lauren because she told me she was de she decided to give up on this fame and start a family. I left Lauren primarily based on the fact that she obsessed with being famous and continued her controversial attempts, causing friction in our relationship that significantly harmed all things, uh, all things considered, all, all our life and our family. Okay, she will continue to attempt to remain relevant and known by any means necessary to include being controversial, which it, to her, which is her main strategy. So Additionally, let's, let's, let's talk mm -hmm. about that, right? So, okay. Lord Southern is honestly, I, I view her as the queen of the trad thoughts, right? Like she was one of the first ones to do it. Mm -hmm. And she's most motivated by attention. Hammerhand, when you see Sir. Lauren Chen, Lauren Pettibone, um, Brett Cooper, Lauren Southern, all these trad women that throw red meat out to the manosphere to yep. get views and simp dollars. Yeah. Wh what do you think about that, man? I think that that's the strategy going forward. I mean, it, it has been since the first one showed up here in this sphere. You know, now, that, okay. that's, that, there's nothing new about that. Well, let, let's let's, yeah, let's look on, back on let's look back on how she started out. So the first thing that I saw her in was that the thing watch. where she was right. yeah she was holding up that placard and she was and all of a sudden all the sluts tried to like cover her up and that was the first controversial thing that she did. Then she joined I think Rebel Media. She did some like anti MGTOW videos for a while. Yep. Then she did all of the uh, like the South Africa migrant stuff for a while. Yeah, she she got involved with Stefan Molyneux. So she's she's been hustling. Mm. She's been trying. But like once she had the kid that slowed her down, then she went into her so-called retirement and then she came back mm. and and nothing like her 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 audience is gone pretty much. Like if you look at her channel, it's tiny compared to what it was. I mean, so now she, she like. She's when, trying I to re when I debated her, she's Sam, man, like it was when I like announced the debate, I think she said, yes, you can call in like three days before. And I did like one community post and one video. She had like a thousand live viewers with a million subs, two million subs. At that point, yeah. I had like 30K viewers and I had like 1400 live viewers. And so like, I, I don't, I'm I don't think she had that many show. Really? She, are you she, sure she's had a million subscribers? Really? No, on her like she was she was streaming on her main channel. Yeah, it was like I think it was a mill. It was it could have been like eight. I don't know anything above five hundred k. You're just too big yeah, for okay. me to recognize. Yeah, yeah. No, look, look. This is just it's. What is it, Salmon? You, you, oh, Salmon's. Uh, you there, Salmon? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, what you said? It's what well, what well, you were saying? It's and then you cut out. No, I, I'm just tired of all this bullshit, right? Like, I'm tired of all the drama. Wait, and uh, Sam, Sam, just... you're, Sam, you're telling me as one of the kings of MGTOW, you're tired of women? <laughs> I'm tired of <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay, no, no, well, I, 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 look, 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 look. I'm, on, I'm an ideas guy, right? So I like, I like the idea of talking about generalizing female behavior. Once you mm -hmm. start talking about specific females, I'm just like – it tires me the hell out, right? Like, I'm just kind of like, oh. But they always like, seem to follow the same fucking pattern over and over and over again. And it works. It's a tried and true pattern until they get to a certain point and they start to burn up. Well, until they get to their mid to late 20s. Like, she's now at that point and now mm -hmm. the wall has hit and it's it's over. So and let's, they get there's no such thing as a wall now. Let, Come on, let's let's, let's uh, center back to because uh, this is like the first half of our conversation. Like we, yeah. I want to get to the recent. Oh, so do um, I. Oh, quote yeah. unquote trolling. Like, look, mm -hmm. as a well, let professional me, uh, let me, troll, let me I, I feel it. like this is cultural appropriation at its <laughs> finest. Like, okay, mm -hmm. uh, Rolo, tell me how uh, Lauren Southern trolled you. All right, well, the, I have to finish up the rest of this year so you guys oh, can ahead, like ahead, get man. a better go idea. Ahead. I'm giving I got to lay the groundwork before you what came afterwards here. So I see. So he says additional uh, she will continue to attempt to remain relevant by any means necessary to include include being controversial, which is her main strategy. Additionally, if you take in or you add in her severe ADHD and challenges this all uh, the challenges this presents to any relationship, let alone added to the chaos and downright crazy Lauren brings into one no sane normal person would put up with that uh, in their partner, regardless of gender or faith. Lauren's ADHD causes her to be unfaithful, 
irresponsible and unreliable and perhaps uh, merely feeds into why she has become fixated on fame. To be honest, I feel this is not clinical, or because he's not clinical, this is just my opinion, that she is a narcissist or at the very least has BPD. She thought uh, she might have BPD when we were together. So she's acknowledging here, or at least according to him, he's, she's acknowledging that she might have borderline personality disorder. I mean, who convert- called it? Everybody called yeah. it. Yeah. A conversation we had. I would love to ha- uh, get your opinion on that, actually, as I feel she meets all the clinical signals just by reading her wiki page, let alone her videos over the years. <laughs> FYI, the legal aspects are still ongoing. Lauren has even tr- has tried every dirty trick so far. All it's doing is slowing down the process. So, Rolo, I'm happy for you to go loud and publicly on all of the above. And this is what I this is why I did what I did back then. And as you highlighted in another, uh, another pivot and grift, uh, to remain uh, famous, relevant, and known, please keep my identity out of it just for the moment. I would be happy to simply call uh, each other and explain it all. The real truth, so to speak, uh, not to mention answer any of your questions. There's, of course, two sides to every story and sometimes two different views upon the same instance formulated. But by, by and large, Lauren's stories on this topic are merely half-truths uh, that is a narrative she aligns herself with as cope and her viewership as grift. And then he got, I'll, I won't read it, but he gave me his, uh, his number and his uh, WhatsApp and his signal uh, uh, identity as well. So uh, then I said, then uh, that was June 11th. And then about an hour later, he hit me up again. He says, also Rolo, happy for you to go very public that I am willing to talk to her online publicly and live on her channel or yours or anyone else's on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, about what she has said, her version of events and mine. I think this is right after he watched her video and across any, uh, any of her, and across any of her quote unquote truth videos, please put that out there, which I did in my response to her stuff. So, so have you had him on yet or no? No, I haven't. I reached out to, in fact, one of the reasons I have been kind of like, uh, holding back on really just going in on law. I went in on Brittany Venti because I could, but, uh, Lauren, I kind of wanted to make sure that uh, Aaron was sort of free and clear of his, uh, mm. like, uh, see if something had changed with his kid because I don't want to fuck anything up for him, like, yeah. legally. So, um, so I've reached out to him and we've had a little bit of discourse. I'm still working on maybe getting him on my show or trying to find something that's a sort of a happy medium, but it's really kind of dicey because he's still in litigations to get his kid back. So, um, so we'll see. I mean, once I'm cleared to do that, I, I will do. I, I will it, definitely have him on. If you need to pass anyone on to him uh, in terms of legal advice, uh, mm-hmm. there's a guy I've been following, uh, Bruce Rivers, and he mm-hmm. talks about he's a criminal lawyer, but he could probably pass on to like fam- good family lawyers, maybe. Yeah, I would appreciate that because I, I I've been trying to I've I've put him in touch with a couple of people. Actually, what's funny is like right after I did my response video to. Lauren's uh, video in the woods. Uh, I had like two or three people hit me up and say, "Hey, you know, here's here's my card. I'm I'm legit." Blah blah blah. Put them in touch with because uh, I again like this is out of my wheelhouse. So all I can really do is pass on information at this stage. So after I did that, and by the way, I read a good portion of that on the shows that I did uh, just right after her video, and I think that's what kind of triggered her because after that point, uh, I had mentioned something to the effect of. Uh, there had been a, a daughter of some sorts, or there had been a child that was produced by Destiny and Lauren, and uh, uh, clearly there there wasn't, or there we or it was, and we don't know anything about it. Yeah. But again, I was relating information that I had got from Chud Logic as well as uh, as well as her husband, who had confirmed like that they'd had this this conversation. Well, my my guess is this: is that when Lauren tr- uh, basically trolled me to make me believe that she had like Lauren had actually had a, um, an ultrasound, like a, a, a fetal monitoring ultrasound uh, in August of last year. Um, I've, I've put the documents out on my, on my Twitter now because they're fake. So I'm like, I, I don't see any reason why they, they, you know, makes me look bad, but I figured I might as well put them out there so people can see what I was dealing with. Um, but so she concocted, and by the way, Brittany Venti has like, confirmed all of this as of her live stream yesterday all of my suspicions and everything that i was talking about sort of speculating about all of it was true so essentially what happened is right after i had done my response video 
uh, to her. That was when it sort of was concocted between herself, Destiny, uh, whoever is in their sort of forums. I don't even know who else I would be talking about, but I do know that Brittany Venti's um, Think Before You Sleep guy, that, that her boyfriend was involved in this as well. Brittany then became involved with this because they're all in the same kind of inbred clusterfuck of, of yes, forums are. or whatever. And I, you know, I, I don't even know where they get together and, and talk about all this stuff. I don't know if it's on Reddit. I don't know if it's on his own forums or whatever. But apparently there was this plot or this, this, this hoax that was hatched uh, between all of them. And I think and maybe she was the one that came up with it, but everybody sort of pitched in to help and to create a craft a narrative and a, a hoax email um, saying that this person who I talked to, and I'll, I'll, read, I'll read you the email here in a minute, uh, basically was a, a worker who had taken pictures of the admittance forms for her to go have a fetal monitoring ultrasound. So when I was looking at this, um, the first thing she had sent me was, I'll, I'll just read it here really quickly. She's, this was her, but she, this is an anonymous tip. Now, granted, this is from Proton Mail. I probably should have looked at the fucking email address, but I'm looking at this as an anonymous tip. It, right after I had done my, uh, my, my, sh my show, like sort of my big reveal that I had been talking to, uh, to her ex-husband. I did this also, I should say, because like uh, Not So Erudite was like saying, why would anybody talk to Rolo about anything like this? And she's just a fucking idiot. You know, she's that, she is absolutely an autistic child. And she, uh, she's like, wants to peg her husband, by the way. Yeah. And so I, so I, so sort of in response, I was, I, I guess I was sort of like um, open to the idea that there could be something out. Someone was going to give me some sort of confirmation about the fact that there had been actually a, a daughter produced by Destiny and stuff. Now, yeah, I've, I'm already familiar with Destiny's position on abortion and everything else. So I, I kind of like. I agree with his position. Like, mm -hmm. I would actually look, guys. If I can guarantee that Lauren Southern's mother. Brittany Venti's mother, Destiny's mother, and Chud Logic's mother all got an abortion. I would give up one of my nuts. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. I would sacrifice my left testicle because I'm kind of partial to the right one. Don't ask me why. Um, I'd give it up. <laughs> I, I really well, wish their mothers were as pro-choice as them, but me, unfortunately, uh, me, uh, we don't live in that world. Let me uh, let me read you what what they concocted. And by the way, now that uh, Brittany Venti has confirmed all of this. This email that was sent to me as an anonymous tip about Lauren Southern's proof of pregnancy uh, was concocted by Destiny, Lauren, uh, think before you sleep guy. I don't know his real name. And, Sean. Uh, Sean. And then I don't know however many co-conspirators were, were, were pitching into this, but they, she was basically saying it was like sort of this work of art. Like we were just trying to make it believable, but not too believable. Uh, so he'd look gullible, but not too gullible, blah, blah, blah. And, or they would still, you know, bite on the uh, bite on the bait. So here's what it said. It said, hi, Rolo. I, 30 male, work in healthcare admin in Vancouver and been following you almost a year now. Your content has made a huge difference in my life. Personally, I'm divorced. I have a child. I have to pay child support, even though they took my kid from me. But I'm on my way to becoming a high value male thanks to you and others. Now, this doesn't sound like somebody who I w is unbelievable to me because I get emails and I get people like in yeah. my DMs all the time, like, like praising my work and telling me all this other shit, right? So then I said, I started following you last year after you started exposing the truth about Lauren Southern. She came into the clinic I work at to get an ultrasound. I checked her in myself, okay? I thought she might eventually break the news online, but she never did. She might have had an abortion done later, but we don't retain any forms of term from termination, at least not in files I'd have access to, unfortunately. I do have proof that she was, all caps, pregnant, though. You were right. You were right the whole time. After her spewing more lies uh, with her video, her recent video, I'm finally reaching out to you. As you can imagine, this is personal for me. What she did to her husband is what happened to me. Fuck her and all of these fake fucking ethos everybody, everyone keeps making excuses for. This is war. I can send you pics of the ultrasound intake form from last year. 
we keep hard copies in parentheses that shows her as pregnant. I already took the pic, but you have to promise you won't say it came from a healthcare worker. I'm at a, I'm at a, I'm not a high level employee, but I still need this job for the time being. Please respond. Say, I know you're getting this and let's bury this bitch. Okay. Now I looked at these forms. Now you're going to listen to probably on Brittany Venti's video yesterday. She's just like, you know, giggling like a little fucking 12 year old about the fact that they put one over on me. And that I said that I had gone and done my due diligence by looking at this form and what I had done, and people don't know this, is my wife was a CT tech, right? So mm. she knows what these fucking forms look like. She worked with MRI, with people who work in MRI and ultrasound. But, but think, about, and, think about the motivation of mm -hmm. a simp who still supports Lauren Southern after everything that came out. She, mm. He still supports her. Like, this dude has five jars with Lauren Southern 3D <clears throat> printed models in them that he's filling up with fluid I can't talk about on YouTube. They'll mm. do anything. Like these guys, these oh, yeah. simps, oh, yeah. I'm not, dude, I'm they'll not, spend I'm, 40, I, I hours, a, they'll spend 40 hours a week researching there... what the forms look like. No, well, here's, they didn't have to because she's already admitted that they were actually legitimate forms. What they did was they went to the uh, BC Women's Healthcare Clinic, went and downloaded those forms that look legit. They actually, they're actually the form. They're the PDF files of those forms. So uh, if, if I might interrupt for a second, what was the point in trying to get you hooked into buying this? That's what I've been talking about for the whole goddamn time. I've been saying, what would be the point in doing all of this? Why would they go to such an elaborate hoax to do this now um no, i don't know hammer, if i can hammer hand can quick. you uh can yeah. you leave this for 20 minutes i gotta go take care of yeah i got you bro okay go. thanks man uh, go on roll go on i'm gonna be listening right, got, on my phone uh, i've got i'm gonna share something with you really quickly here because I, I think i think the reason they were doing this first of all destroy your credibility uh attack your intelligence mm -hmm. possibly get you a strike i mean they were just trying to open up as many vectors of attack as possible yeah, well, I, I also know that like Destiny needs to. They, they've been basically trying to take down. Um, they've been trying to take down uh, red pill content creators for quite some time. There's been this active sort of campaign amongst um, amongst uh, well, certainly Destiny, who has sort of been the mastermind behind a lot of this stuff. But if you watched how. Uh, Modern Life John was sort of stormed off the stage on uh, on uh, uh, Saucecast not too long ago. All of that, by the way, was coordinated by uh, Natalia, who was one of the, the hosts that's on the show, plus Angela Knight, plus a lot. Uh, by the way, Angela Knight also involved in all of this, also involved with Destiny. Um, so there's been this sort of coordinated effort to sort of take down the people who have like names in the manosphere. Donovan Sharp was another one that they did. And so... Uh, I've seen videos where um, Destiny was saying, you know, we're, we're, they were trying to find dirt on me, like in my background, to sort of take me down by like stuff from, you know, skeletons in your closet kind of thing. And he was frustrated because he even said this, he was laughing about it. He says, there's really nothing to, to get on Rolo because I am who I say I am, right? I, I have a daughter. I have, I've been married for X amount of years, blah, blah, blah. So rather than... Uh, you know, they couldn't find anything in my, they can't past. dox you and destroy your so path. Yeah, so they're going to, so they have to create something. Yeah. And yeah. that's what this was. This, this whole trolling effort, which by the way, was, it took a, over the course of two months. What, because what they were hoping for is that I was going to expose Lauren by exposing these documents, which by and the they way, would say bullying and harassment, give them a strike. Of course. And that's, and, that's pretty much what well, it's all about. How did you get turned on to the fact that it was a fraud? Well, they, I, I didn't. That was just the problem. Is like, but I your, was, your spidey senses must have been tingling at some point. Uh, like you're did, like, okay, they did when I was talking with Brittany Venti. Now, this is all about Lauren up to this point. Now, it was Lauren who sent me this this anonymous tip. It was called Anon Tip Five 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 at Proton Mail or Proton Me. Right, that was the name. And so I'm at the point right, now, and I had a, con I had a conversation, a longer conversation with her too. I said, I said, first of all, thank you what you're doing. I said. Aaron, Lauren's ex, and I have been in communication about this ongoing child custody litigation since, since December. I understand the risks in giving this information to me. My wife is a medical professional, so I'm pretty sure 
there is some Canadian equivalent to a HIPAA violation you'd be accountable for yep. by me doing so, right? So I knew about this stuff. Again, I, I took this, I, I showed this document to my wife, who, by the way, has 30 years as a CT tech, as well as working with people that she, like, in, in medical like it made It made no sense. Like, why would somebody risk, like, 20 30 years of career and future and right. like giving you this info like that that to me that was the, like i didn't know about the trolling and you read that you read the statement and mm -hmm. i didn't know any of the backstory until you mentioned it after yeah, and you're never and gonna I, hear you're never gonna hear because their their voices are louder and they've got all their they've got their little cackling you know hens in the background there but the thing is so i i, I actually did my due diligence in the sense that i i did these forms by the way they are legit forms. They were just, they were downloaded and then they wrote in the information themselves. She also admitted to having some like guy who was a Photoshop professional, like sort of doctor them a little bit more so that they looked a little bit more believable. And so I'm looking at these. I, my wife said they look legit. I took it to another friend of ours who is a NICU nurse. She said that they look legit too. So I was like, they don't, I mean, granted it's the Canadian medical system. But from the U.S. position, like these, they look like legit documents because they actually were legit documents. They were just blanks that they had filled yeah. in themselves, yeah. and then took a picture of it. I mean, and then later took a picture of it with a sticky note saying "Rolo, fuck you. We, yeah, you know, we got you. You're so fucking gullible." Har har har. So, did you actually talk about this since as if it were real on a show? Oh yeah, I did because I was. Oh, saying, I was, okay, I was, okay. Here's it because I was popping off. I thought I was confident that these were actually the real deal. And so, so what I did was I mentioned on a, on a couple of live streams, I said, Hey, look, I have the documentation here that she actually was, um, she actually was, uh, uh, pregnant at some point because and it was August 8th. The, the date was August 8th, 2022. Her due date was supposed to be March. They even went to the point of like trying to figure out like where she would be in a trimester and what her due date would be from the time she had the ultrasound. Like they were in, I mean, this is how, this is the level of OCD meticulousness that these these people went into her due date was supposed to be march 24th uh 2023 and i looked at it and i go it seems about right that would have been about nine months or so you know from the first so trimester. so what were the consequences of all this trolling like what happened to you what happened well to okay so here's the plan was this the plan was to get me to post them publicly now i knew that there's no way i was ever going to do that i did okay. say that i had them and it was right about that time when I started popping off about how I know for a fact that she was pregnant. I never said it was Destiny's kid. I did say that ah. they had a relationship together and the possibility exists that the person she was fucking at that time would have been the father. In fact, I was on No Jumper and I said exactly this. I said, I don't know 100% that it is Destiny's kid because I would need a DNA test to, I mean, it would be stupid for me to say something like that. I would need a DNA test for, for that to be verified or, you know, and then if she's aborted the kid, then there's, that's never going to happen. So the reason why I said that was because Destiny was on uh, his, on his Twitter feed and he said, I will bet you $10,000 that you can't prove that the kid is mine. And I thought it was stupid because I'm like, of course I can't because I don't have a fucking DNA. I, 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 there's no DNA material. I can't actually conclusively say it was your kid. So I just blew it off until later. I realized the reason he was doing that was he was trying to bait me into going yep. public with yep. those documents so they can do what they did just like two, three days ago. So they could go, ha ha, we got you. You're such an, uh, you're such a gullible fuck. Right? So they only got you halfway. That's well, all they got. They, yeah. they were hoping for that. And by the way, whenever I mentioned that or it, hell, anytime I did any live stream, there was always somebody in the chat. There was always people in the comments. There's always people on Twitter saying, when are you going to post those? You better post those. If you don't post those, uh, you're, you're a liar and a fraud. And like people were really trying to ride me. So they're shaming you them. now. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, and because no, they're just they trying were, to go to response. Yeah. Well, so, so, so what's the, so my, the ultimate outcome of that is, is what, so let's just say for sake of argument, I had actually posted them. I would, I, I said this at the same time. I said, I'm not going to post these because I, one, I'll lose my YouTube channel for sure, but for posting medical yep, records. That's, that's I'm, what they no, want, especially medical that. misinformation. Remember? Right. Yeah. yeah. And Channels then, get eked completely yeah. because of that. Right. Or or I could have lost my Twitter account if I put it up and made it public. I wasn't about to do that. And so everybody's like, I'll bet you don't have that. Fuck you, Rolo, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, tell you what, you come to Las Vegas. I'll print these out and put the, make a physical copy for you. You sit across the table from me and you can tell me if these are real or they're not because I wasn't going to put them 
Well, I wasn't going to make them public because I don't want to lose my fucking channel. Also, also didn't whoever this person was, I didn't want them to have to face what whatever the Canadian equivalent of a HIPAA violation would have been. So I was like covering my ass from every angle. But I'm like, I do have these. I have the dates. I actually made public the dates, but I never posted the thing because they wanted me to post them so that they could get their yucks and they could say, ha, it's a yeah, big yeah, giant yeah. elaborate troll. And remember, okay, so here's the thing. No, this is not just a troll. This is a takedown attempt. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's more yeah, it than is. just a troll. So let me let me give you the timeline here. When what I just read you, when she first sent me these do these fake documents, that was June nineteenth. Okay, she came out and Brittany came out just recently, uh, saying, "Oh, it was a big elaborate hoax on August what ninth, I think." So you're looking at almost two months of this very elaborate hoax in the hopes that I was going to go public with these, with these things. And I wasn't doing it and it wasn't working the way they wanted it to. So it's going on, it's dragging on and it's dragging on. And they've got like, and by the way, the longer it takes, the more suspicious I could get. Right. So, so while, while I'm going, I'm having this ongoing conversation with who I believe is an anonymous tip, but it's actually uh, Lauren Southern the whole time. And uh, I mean, she's basically saying, like, she told me this, right? She says, awesome. Thanks for responding. It's an honor to communicate with you. Yeah, uh, the form is legit, but I understand you wanting to verify it. Uh, I'll try to think of ways to do this and get back to you. Is there any, because uh, people said, oh, Rolo didn't do his due diligence. I, here's me actually talking to who I didn't know was Lauren Southern at the time, wanting to get some sort of confirmation on this. Because I said this, I said, if I do release this publicly, I can only have, uh, I only have come from one source, wherever she had the ultrasound, I would have to be, I would be held liable on YouTube for publishing medical information. However, there are some workarounds I can manage to take it public. Before I do, I need to know that this is 100% legit. The documentation looks authentic. And I hate to ask you, but is there any uh, way, is there any way I can verify these papers are real documents. I believe they are legit, but the first thing anyone will ask me is where I got them and are they uh, are they forgeries? I literally asked her, are these legit? I'm do here's me doing my fucking due diligence to try to figure out if these are are really the real deal. I said I'll do my I'll do a bit of digging myself. I'll verify with Aaron as much as he knows. And I did, because remember, I told him I asked him, I said, Hey, is this is this something that is that was there a pregnancy involved between Lauren and destiny? I said, but if there's anything else you can do to help me legitimize these for verification, I would appreciate it. Thanks for doing this, blah, blah, blah. And then she comes, she comes back. So she comes back with this. Here's her, her response was, yeah, the form is legit. She's telling me the form is legit, but I understand you wanting to verify it. I'll try to think of ways that we can do this and get back to you. Is there anything you'd like to see in this regard? As long as it doesn't involve my identity, I'm game. I said, as the release, as for the releasing of private healthcare info, I'm not overly worried because I took the photo when I was the only person in the room away from the camera. No kidding. Right. Last year, some crazy bitch attacked the nursery staff, and they all made it policy never to have just one member uh, in the reception area. So, if you need another pick, I will have to wait for the right time when there aren't uh, patients waiting and the receptionist is away on a bathroom break or something else, right? See, this is how elaborate the lie is, right? So, so yeah, I'm, I'm searching for, uh, uh, says, I'm sure I'll ask for, uh, but they will just deny and pretend not to even know who she is. They can't prove anything. It's a rock solid form from my end. Uh, if you can't publish on YouTube, what will you do? Twitter. So this so like, this sounds, this she's, sounds she's basically like... encouraging me. She's basically encouraging me to try to find other ways to go public mm -hmm. with it because that's what she wanted me to so, do. So this sounds like, you know, me. Okay, this is how I troll Lauren Southern. I know you were a non-virgin before marriage. Yeah. I know you got divorced. I know you have a kid. You're a single mother, non-virgin before marriage. You are what's wrong with the West. You are what's wrong with the world. That's the nice way of saying it. The easy way of saying it, the, the trolling way of saying it is, Lauren Southern, if I went up to all the migrants in the West and told them I got a place for them to live for free and I shoved them all up in your puniti, there would still be too much room in it. 
That's trolling. This isn't trolling, guys. This is Lauren well, Southern and her this, simps this, trying to use yeah. HIPAA to either destroy Rolo's channel, destroy his Twitter, or put him in jail. Yeah. Well, it gets it gets worse. So I said, hey, man, is there anything else you can give? This is now, this is July 28th. I said, is there anything else you can give me to verify that Lauren was pregnant, right? I even tried this again later on, okay? Uh, her ex said that she was carrying Destiny's love child and that it was a girl. I can't exactly prove it was his kid, but uh, was but she was pregnant when she came in for the ultrasound. What trimester was she in uh, if she was having this procedure done? Because this is when I was looking at the dates. Remember, I looked at the dates to see if the, the March 24th due date was actually like when she would have had the kid, right? And so then she comes back, and this is the last correspondence I had with her, okay? Oh, man, I really wish I could help more, but that bitch made a complaint to the clinic. This is her trying to cut everything off, right? Don't yeah. worry. I'm pretty sure they have no idea who leaked the info. I'm, cl I'm clear, but they, they're watching everyone pretty close, so there's not much else I can do. They'll be double-checking if any of the files accessed on the computer are from the computer as well. Now, do she we know was, if it was, um, was it Lauren saying those emails or one of her simps? No, I'm, I'm going to explain to you who was making this here in just a second. She was first trimester when she came in and you can see the estimated due date from the form I sent. But this okay, is how okay. like, this is how so, meticulous so they me, were. Then it says, I saw you sticking it to her on no jumper. Great stuff. Can't wait until I see more. Let's summarize, let's summarize the situation because I know you've read this on your channel before. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you probably had more viewers than I did. So like the Rolo fans, they've heard this before. So I think I see two options. One is she wasn't pregnant. This is an elaborate troll. Or two, she was pregnant and she was trying to muddy the waters by sending fake shit to you to make it look like she wasn't pregnant. Whether or not Lauren Southern got pregnant by Destiny, it, it doesn't matter. She's still a single mother, mm -hmm. non-virgin, that was messing with Destiny. Like, that's that's basically confirmed now. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, there was, uh, there had to have been some kind of, uh, some kind of relationship there at some point. Now I'll explain to you why. The re I think this is why they went public with it, or they they decided to just like, like just like the jig is up, right? The the reason why she decided to do this is because I don't know if you saw this video, but um, Andrew Wilson had uh, let's see, Destiny and Erudite and Alex from Playing with Fire I saw it. were on. Yeah, they were on his show. And Wilson <laughs> just point blank said, "Did you fuck Lauren? Did you have a? Did you have sex with her? Did you, like he was just like point blank said yes or no? Did you fuck? And he is just throwing up his arms and yep. erudites running cover for him, and he's just oh yeah, tw so, twisting in the wind. Yep. And so here's the thing: is he couldn't have said yes, and he couldn't have said no because Sa if he had, yeah. then he would. Then the jig is up. Sam, Sa man, this is like um." Do you watch anime? You know what, do you watch anime? Sam yeah, look, look. You know what? You know. What, I'm. I'm just. I'll, as you guys are talking about this, I'm thinking all these women are doing is getting you to play defense. You yep. got to play offense, yep. right? So my offense in this case would be. I, I like. I look at what Venti's doing. Venti right Ooh. now is with Sean, but she's also hanging around with Gary from Nerd Rotic, yeah. who's going to open up Ooh. new circles. Mm. And for same, other yeah. males that she can, she, she's going to open up her circle for a male to enter. Yeah. Um, but no, what you, I'm saying right got, now is, uh, I, got some, I got something about. Nerd so what Rotic I would do is, there. I would be talking oh. to Nerd Rotic. I'd be talking to whoever, like I would be trying to like point to him and tell him, "Hey, look, this is what she's been doing to me. Just be careful because she a, could." She, no, I'm, so fairly, I'm fairly certain Gary from Nerd Rotic was in on it. Let's let's take a real quick. Why? Deal. Because let's, okay, he's been he's been this like okay, so he's this leftist from the coast from San Francisco, right? Yep. So, mm -hmm. and so he's now moved to I think to Texas where they where they are. He's like, oh, I'm Diego. based. Marvel is feminist now. I'm like, that's not enough, you fucking nerd. Okay, okay, but but seriously, like. Why is he all of a sudden friends with Venti and Sean? Like, this mm -hmm. is just the bizarre. So do you have okay. any insight on that? Like, what's right. going on? All right. So let me let me get. Okay. This is just, okay. This is me spitballing here. Okay. So um, back in, I think it was in May. Uh, I was, I'm, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm, I'm somewhat good friends with Chris, Chrissy Mayer, right? 
and I, I she that. was doing a gig out here in Vegas. I was meeting up with her. I took some pictures with her. I, I consider her a friend. I had uh, we had um, uh, was it um, uh, what's what's the girl? Fuck, uh, oh, X-ray Melody. girl. X-ray girl X-ray was girl, on. Melody we Mayer, had yeah. her. Yeah, we had her, and we had uh, one of her friends on uh, Access Vegas. They were actually panel girl, you know, our panel girls, right? I really like. I felt I gave a fucking uh, you know X-ray girl a gift, man, because she's into Warhammer. I like Warhammer too. And so I, you know, I thought I, w- I was really cool with them. I was looking forward to seeing Christy and stuff. And they were doing their nerd erotic uh, Friday night tights or something like mm-hmm. that at right. Stick- Sticky Paw Studios, which is here in Vegas. And um, I went down there. I, w- I wasn't actually going there to see Gary. I was actually going to see Christy because I knew she was there. Mm. And I, I wanted to see her and get a picture with her and say, hey, you know, say, hey, because I hadn't been able to see her up until that point. And so I'm kind of like hanging around Sticky Paws and I, I'm a regular at Sticky Paws. I'm there all the time, right? And so I'm going around and they're basically like, they're doing the show and I'm kind of looking in on the show and everything. And his, his stage manager basically like, like, like pushes me out of the fucking room and says, yeah, hey, what, you know, closes the door and everything. Pussy, like, pussy. Like, like it's all fucking important and everything. I'm Damn like, it. okay, fine. And I was waiting around. I wasn't expecting to get on the fucking show. I just want to see Chris, right? And, um, and so the people are around there. I think they probably knew who I was because I got I, I now in hindsight, like thinking of what the vibe was at the in the studio at that point, because all their all their people, all their followers are in the green room and all there's some people who I don't know are like their hangers on for the show. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of I think they knew who I was because everybody was just like not talking to me. They just did not want to have anything to do with me. And then, you know, Chrissy came out. I took a picture with her. Uh, I was talking to her for a little bit, and then she had to go back in because it's a long ass show. And that was I, I it. Swear, I was I was there for not even an so, hour. So how does were, how does this all relate so to much, Gary and Venti? You were so much you were so much nicer, Rolo. You were so much nicer to the Geese and Gamer Squad than I would be. If I was around the Geese and Gamer Squad, I'm taking Star Wars Girl. We're going to the bathroom. I'm making her take a couple lines, and then I'm gonna get kicked out <laughs> by security with my pants missing. Okay, um, but here's the joke I wanted to make, Sam. I, anime you know the anime everybody like knows the anime series where like the last episode of a season they just show old clips and animations from other episodes yep that's kind of what i'm feeling right now it's just like we yeah, rollo's bringing I, up chud logic i roasted him he's bringing up um not so erudite i roasted that bitch and then he brought up alex from playing with fire good god, oh god. rollo you're gonna bring up all the people that got beef that was with. that was Are one of the most frustrating butcher shop that was one of the most frustrating interviews I've ever had. Like he just he just wouldn't get it. Like he's he's you know he's just mouth breathing and he can't figure out any of the things I'm talking about. Well, I, I what I was so I didn't I don't I don't know him from Adam. I never really talked to this guy before. I really didn't. I, I was like I said I only saw him for like half a second uh, at the studio, and then I, I like I said I took pictures with Chris and I left right. And then later on, for whatever reason, like he starts coming at me for some fucking reason. Because I, they had uh, maybe he saw me there or some one of his crew saw me there or whatever, and I didn't, I didn't say two fucking words about it. And then suddenly I'm like, why is this guy coming at me? And um, like he was, I guess he was talking to shit about like me being the red pill, you know, Godfather or whatever and this shit. I'm like, and I'm used to that. And so somebody had sent me some video about like, oh look, uh, what's his name from Nerd Rodic was talking shit about you. I'm like, why? Who? Why? Why? You know? And um, now, now it makes sense because he's tight with Brittany Venti. And well, so, so um, uh, now he's got, now he's, I think probably him giving me shit on his stream was another attempt to get me to go public well, with yeah. the fucking document. There, I got so, a look, there's I a lot a of, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes right now. I've talked to a few guys that yeah. have talked about how women out of the blue are starting to contact them, send them nudes, want to connect with them. And I've got like three women right now doing that. And other guys are telling me this, that this is happening now all of a sudden in the manosphere. Yes. So I have, and a so great, there's a, yeah, go on, go on, uh, finish your point, Sam. And oh, there's a, there's a coordinate, there's a coordinated. Effort yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, like if you're, if you're talking about all this, they realize they can't stop the ideas. So now they, they have to kind of discredit silence, Indian. Silence the voices and put them in prison. Is what but yeah, hey, do... Rolo, let me ask you a question real quick, man. I'm sorry to bust in guys. That's bust just, in hammer hand. That's your job. Is, is there a, is there another angle here with Venti, or was this just an elaborate hoax to try to get you to step on your dick with a bad drop? Well, uh, well here's the thing. So um, I, it, was, it was taking too long. This is my speculation here, okay? So it's taking too long for me to go public. 
as you know, at the end of June, right, right around then, I was on No Jumper. Uh, and oddly enough, I, I'm not saying they were in on it, but I can't say they weren't. But suddenly they asked me out of the blue, hey, we really want you to come and we want to do an interview with you. Flacco wants to do an interview. I'm like, okay, why now? Right. <laughs> and then, so I thought I was going to get fucking ambushed, but I, w I don't care. If you're going to ambush me, that's fine. But let me l at least give me a hint that I'm going to get ambushed so I can be prepared. Right. So <laughs> that defeats I'm an like, ambush. well, exactly. But so I'm like, like I have people, I have my people saying Destiny's going to be there when you're there in Burbank. Right. And I was like, okay. So I hit up Flacco. I said, look, I, I, if you're planning to spring destiny on me or whatever, I said, I'm just let me know ahead of time. I didn't even say I wouldn't do it. I just said, just let me know ahead of time because mm -hmm. I wanted to have the printouts of the, well, the protection order was the first one from Aaron because Aaron, her ex-husband gave me uh, the documents for the protection order. So I wanted people to know that I had actually talked to Aaron. And then uh, I also had the uh, printouts of the medical, the false forged medical admissions for her ultrasound. I also had those in my back pocket while I was talking to, um, to Flacco. And so I wanted to be prepared in case he actually like sort of stepped in the room and said, all right, let's have it out. Give you know, tell me, show me the, the, the proof ass hat because he was there on the same day that I was there. He was also, uh, also, uh, Sneeko was there on the same okay. day. I was there. Uh, I got and, 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 and MLD was I, I gotta, there I on the same day. Real quick, man. I got to put him real quick. I got two issues with the Arolo. The first one is more advice. The second one is an issue. The first one, advice. Look, man, you are so concerned about evidence and proof. And in the, the, the realm of science and medicine, which I work in when I'm not undead chronic, that's important. But you could literally have video evidence of like Lauren Southern's life getting impregnated by destiny, getting pregnant, all of it. And they would still deny it yeah, and call yeah. you an incel. Right. And so it's kind of, this is kind of like, and I know you know this on some deeper level, like you can have all the documents and evidence you have, and they'll still just buck and whine. Right. They won't. The matter. second point is there was a, there was a, uh, I think it was on the 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 Fed and Lubed podcast, Fresh and Fraud, Fresh and Shit, <laughs> where you called in, and this is an actual. This this is this made me disappointed in you. You were debating uh, Sneeko and Destiny, mm -hmm. and the entire time, bro, you didn't call them cucks once. <laughs> God damn it, dude! Like, how could they, they're both confirmed cuck? They're fucking I'm confirmed not, I'm cuckolds, bro. I'm not, how could I'm I was so disappointed, man. I'm like, I'm I was crying zirka. that you know, night on my pillow. See, here's the, the thing: is first of all, like, what what does that? I mean, I can like do personal attacks on them all day long I, because everybody else does. I mean, that's not, that's not a personal. That's not, not an attack. At that point, it's yeah. not a personal attack. It's a fact. Like they are factually cuckolds. Oh yeah, and they I know. Both that. And everybody, watch their and everybody else, get knows. everybody else dudes. knows. It just wasn't. It wasn't actually the topic of conversation at that time. So it's just hard for me. You know, it's just hard for me. Given well, I mean, I can. Styles. I mean, I could. I, everybody wants blood, right? They always say, "How? Oh, why didn't you go harder?" Well, I mean, why I didn't mean, you punch I him want in the blood, face? but Destiny yeah. and Sneko want zinc in their bitch. Yeah. Well, so here's the here's the deal with uh, Brittany Venti. So it wasn't take. It was taking too long. I think I, I think probably my going out to no jumper was sort of a I, I think it was a setup that didn't happen. That so it was, it was some taking, reason it was didn't taking happen. too long. Were you yeah, driving from her long. left eye to her right eye? <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, so I, uh, I I I think it was taking too long. I think that because when I go back and I look at it, by the way, the uh, the video that I did, the the video I shot with Flacco at that time. Uh, I shot that at the end of June and it didn't even come out until like the end of July. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, why is this taking so fucking long? Well, it's because they didn't care enough about it because I was only there to be there to be set up and a setup that never happened for logistical reasons or whatever, re whatever the fuck, you know, I think they probably would have loved to have had me like been taken down yeah. uh, like in an epic scale on like they, what do they have like four and a half million subs? Like, they really wanted that to happen. But here's the thing is 
all the shit with Adam 22 and Lena the plug that was going on at that time, that was overshadowing anything. But, but Rolo, so dude, I, I think, think that's probably what fucked it up. For I him. think it's more insidious than that, man. Like we've had our, I mean, we haven't had disagreements. I've had disagreements with you, but when it comes to your channel, right. And the business or whatever you want to call the organization, business philosophy you push, it's not just getting owned. That's the shit that I deal with, right? It's like the mm. shit like, oh, I own this person. You own this person. Lauren Southern was trying to get you to release HIPAA information. Yeah. And from the, what really pissed me off, which maybe I was thinking about it all day, was Brittany Venti's squad was trying to get evidence mm -hmm. that you would accept CP. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that to you here and just well, say, yeah, let's, those, let's dude, hear about those that situations. Bullshit. You okay. lose your channel. How many subs do you have? Like a million? No, you a lose your fucking yeah. freedom, not no, just a your, channel. Yeah. So you that's, lose your that's, freedom. That's what I got into on my stream yesterday. So here's what happened is around June 26. Now, this is right after um, right after Lauren had sent me, like, I think it was a, about maybe a week after Lauren had sent me uh, her false, you know, information, her fucking false flag shit, right? Um now, what had happened was this, is she sent me this video, or not, she sent me this um, uh, false email as well, and I'll read it to you. This is on June 26. She says, I saw your video on Lauren Southern's husband, and you mentioned Brittany Venti being a feminist, so I thought I would email you my experience with her and her husband's, uh, her and her uh, ex-boyfriend, or excuse me, her and her ex-boyfriend in person. I've known Brittany for many years. We've met uh, when she was started dating her ex, her now ex Mason. Uh, he exposed her for the first time a few years back about her being a feminist who let her cat pee in her bed. I hung out with her uh, a lot back then in groups uh, for the He Will Not Divide Us, Shia LaBeouf, LaBeouf whatever uh, era. He was used to hanging out in uh, groups, uh, but sometimes Mason would have a long conversations with me about their relationship. I got to see a lot of their actions, their interactions in person for about a year and a half. She drove him insane and made it look like he was the, the bad one. Meanwhile, she would provoke him and say things like he was too weak or how he was, wasn't fit enough. She would even fight with him in group hangouts uh, in front of everyone else. And basically she, I mean, this is like paragraphs and paragraphs long of like this background with this person who was good friends with her ex-boyfriend Mason, right? Now the, the end of this, she sends me these pictures, by the way, of her in hotel rooms and hanging out with these kids and everything else. I, I've made them public on, on Twitter if anybody wants to see them. But the, uh, the last par paragraph here is this. Thanks again for speaking up. You inspired me to do the same and send this email. You're speaking the truth. And I know women like Lauren and Brittany hate to see it, but it's really important for men out there who don't have much guidance. Let's by the way, by the way, you're right about Brittany's Christian trad grift. I know for a fact that Brittany has full on nude pics that directly played yes. into them breaking up because Mason sent me proof when it happened. He was pretty upset, but I'm happy for the guy because I saw her uh, for who she really is, and uh, and he got away from her. So that was the first time that Brittany Venti, posing as some an anonymous person, said, "I have nudes." Okay, or now, she it, have it, Brittany it, has it, full on. I think nude it was pics. confirmed that it was one of her simp's, right? That wrote this? No, no I, it was. I, mean, I think it was. Like, I, I'm not no, confirmed. it's confirmed that it was you Destiny can't who anything, wrote this shit. But it's she, just like there's a 95 yeah. percent chance is one of her simps trying to get you because I, I saw one mm -hmm. screenshot, man, and the screenshot is why I was like, I need to talk to Rolo. Well, I, let, let, me, let me let me saying, clarify. Do you let me want? clarify that. Let, let, me saying, clarify. let me just let me just tell the fans okay. here. It's just mm -hmm. like there was some uh, Brittany Venti sim that said, I got nudes of her, right? And then you were just like. Well, I mean, how old is she during those news? No, and he that's was just not like what happened. He was that's, like seventeen. Do you want that? Not them? what happened. And you said I'll, no. I will read. I'll read you the exchange. I'll read you the exact exchange here. Okay. So um, then, of course, uh, she. That, I left it at that. Then this is almost a month later because July twenty seventh was the next contact. I didn't even. Re I didn't even reply to this. You got to remember, this was June 26th when she sent me the first one about how she knew that there were nudes and blah, blah, blah. I just left this in my inbox okay, here's and for a here, month. Here's the thing, Rolo. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know what happened. You've read this out. Dude, you don't have to tell us the exacts. Like, when you tell me that these bitches did this, I'm going to believe you on that. Right? I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Hammerhead Wait. has seen it on Twitter. Sandman has probably seen it. Just give us generals, man. Like, let's let's okay. go to the generals because well, I want be, Sandman you have to, to be, roast you have to simps. Be spe- okay, I, it's true, but you have to be specific about this. So I, that's why I'm giving you Hold dates on, and hey, times hey, here. Ro- Rolo, not on my mm-hmm. channel. You know, okay. Like, here's uh, the deal. My, okay, uh, let, let, you me, let me just, on my channel, let, me just like, let me just get to let me just get to the okay, point here. On, then. So on, so later on, this is a month later. She hits me up again. She says, "Bro, I don't know if you saw my first email because I never responded to it." She says, "With my experience with this bitch, but she just made a video on you and Lauren Southern and she retweeted it, and she actually put the link in there, right? So she's sending me the link to her hit video, which is another attempt to get me." to post the medical records that were false because they really, really, I was taking too long. It was a month later and I hadn't posted anything, right? So then I, then I saw the video. A day later, I said, do you have any extra dirt on, on Brittany? I said it, it would be appreciated because I was going to I was going to hit back because she docks my daughter and that docks my wife and everything else, right? And so I said two questions. I said, do you still have the nudes that Mason sent you? I said, and what is her real last name? Because I didn't know at that time, right? And then she says, her name is Brittany Deer. And yeah, I think I have her nudes on my old phone. So she's saying, I think I have these here. Okay. Then I said, and I did say this. I said, have you, uh, if you have those nudes, they might make a good ace card at some point if you're okay to share them. Hey, I have some nudes on my phone. Um, Hammerhand, I'm going to send them, I'm going to send them to you right now. Um, not my nudes, a uh, uh, bitch's nudes. Go on, Rolo. You better not so, send me your so, nudes, motherfucker. I'll hang so up. This, so this is the thing. It's like, it was right around this point. that This is what people say. Well, you were asking her for, for nudes. Like, no. I asked her if she still had them on her phone. I asked her to see if she still had them, right? And I said, they might make a good ace card. And I think it was at that point, like, I somebody in my chat said, hey, uh, Undead Chronic would really like to see these because I think that you guys were talking about the fact that she actually had nudes at some point in her past and you guys were trying to find them or that. And I had other people, by the way, who were emailing me, DMing me saying that they are out there. They do exist. And I think there were some, like some of you guys' crew that were telling me this. So uh, there's so, nobody over here that was looking for her nudes. Yeah. And so, well, I, like I said, I got, I have the, uh, I got a super chat from a guy saying that, the, that uh, uh, you guys would be real interested to know whether or not they're nudes or they're not. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then he, then she comes back and she says, Great stream, man. I just got home from work. Let me go through my old phone and get it. This is what she said. I said, all right. I said, she said, all right. I got my old phone and found the pics. I looked at the date where she, where she was. Uh, she was 17 here. Where do you want me to send them? This is the exchange. There's no other <clears throat> exchange besides this, okay? That's a very odd thing to say. Okay. She says, she says, I have them. This is, by the way, this is July. Th- I have to be specific about the date here. July 31st, 2023 at 941 PM. All right. I got my old phone. I found the pics. I looked at the date. She was 17 here. Where do you want me to send them? That was the question. And I, I, that's when I smelled a rat. That's when I go, Oh, wait a minute. At 946, I replied with this. Actually don't send them. Not if she's 17. I'll take your word for it. I trust you, but I'm not going to knowingly accept underage nudes. And then I signed my RT at the end, and that was that, right? That was the last thing I posted to her. Do you Actually, to remember who super me. chatted you? I, I could probably go back and look. That I would be that I, I could probably go look back and look and see what that super chat was. Yeah, but they said, be yeah, it would be, one, it'd be interesting to see if somebody else was out there trying to play you guys. But so, anyways, that's what I said. I said, actually, don't send them. Not if she's 17. I'll take your word for it. I trust you, but I'm not going to knowingly t- accept underage nudes. That was what I said. And then here's hmm. the next. Here's here's what she follows up with. Oh yeah, good point. I wasn't sure about the laws with that uh, because really? of age of consent. <laughs> but let me check further down on my phone. It's old, so uh, because I'm is, trying to get you put in a jail yeah, cell right. with Tyronius yeah. Maximus. Oh, oh no 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 no! But 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 uh, chronic. Listen to this. This is uh, this is this is great. She tries to counter, right? Uh, okay, a uh, good point. I wasn't sure about the age of consent. Yada yada. Let me check further down on my phone. It's old, so uh, there is a lot to scroll th- scroll down. But I'm pretty sure she uh, he showed me one 
from when she was 19 too, because it was the last one towards the end of the relationship and he has the time on it. I think it was from her secret Snapchat Mason found, if I recall. This is when I cut everything off because I, I knew this was bullshit. She's mm-hmm. countering here with a 19 with 19 years old. Yep. Now I didn't know. Did I know this was Brittany at the time? No, I didn't. I thought it might have been somebody else who's trying to troll me. I did not know it was actually her at this time. So and that's let, by the way, she admits to saying let's, this let's is when say, I she let, says this is when I ghosted him. So let's say it wasn't Brittany and was one of her simps. Mm-hmm. Dude, if you go to her Twitter timeline, she's like promoting the fuck out of it. She's like, oh, he got them. He got them. He got them. Brittany Venti. She's a liar. Use, a he, liar. Here's, here's the, um, here's like the, the phrase I have in my mind that just pisses me off. Sorry to cut you off, but I'm going to be taken off. So just letting you guys, guys know. Okay. Sam right and, on, um, brother. Thanks for Sam showing up, man. Before you leave. All before right. You leave, Sam Later. Man. One question. Take care. Oh, well, go ahead. I would say before you leave. Um, give us a two to three sentence opinion on the situation of Brittany Venti's fans and or her trying to send child pornography to Rolo to destroy him. Well, I think that this is what a lot of women are going to do now. If they can take pictures of themselves from 14 to 18 and have these pictures. And then at yes, some point, if they if a creep comes after them and want, is interested and they just send the pictures to the creep and then, you know, they, they could get you know, distributing child porn, but the guy will basically be in possession of it. Right. So all they need uh, is your mutually... phone number. They don't even need your fucking permission. They can just right. send it to you and it's there. Well, yeah, me, uh, that's true. Let me, I looked up the law on this, by the way, I went and co- to, to see if, if she had broken any laws and she did. This is actually a criminal act. So because... before, before you continue, Sam, man needs to go. Mm-hmm. Sam, man, all right. you, you're a mod on my channel, man. You should right. link Sam, man to in my comment section. If you guys nah, like we're Sam, good. Man's we're content. Good. Sam, man, God fucking damn it. Don't make my mods do it for you. You better show up in my comment section and link your second channel. I'm not even channel. on your page. Don't worry about it, man. Okay, Take mods, care. it's your Peace job. Bud. Sam, Sam is too lazy to do it. Mods, it's your job. Sam, dude, thank you for joining the show. Thank you for joining the stream. I'll hit you up next time we have a big topic. Peace, man. All right, later. But so I'll, let me uh, I'll expl- I'll explain the the law that she broke here. Okay, okay go so ahead. Here, here, this is this is off of the child protection oh, C O P P A. I think it's child uh, online Coppa. child protection. Yeah, Coppa. Coppa. Yeah. Coppa. This is from Coppa. Okay, the law bars not only the exchange of sexually explicit images of children, but also any attempt to convince another person that child pornography is available. The law covers the law covers offers that do not contain actual pornography and even offers in which no pictures actually exist. It's pandering provisions targets the person who at quote, quote unquote advertises, promotes, presents, distributes, or solicits any material or purported material in a manner that reflects the belief that is, that is intended to cause another to believe that it depicts children engaged in sexual activity. She offered these. This is the law she broke. Now, before anybody gives me this shit, because I know what's going to happen in your fucking comments, you're going to, this is going to blow up over this part right here. I'm not going to sue Brittany Venti. I never said I was going to sue Brittany Venti. I said I was going to file a police report that that crime had been committed because it's not up to me to process a criminal investigation it is up to either the state or the or whoever the the law enforcement is i guess the online Good. cyber division of whatever branch it is in texas it's, to do that it's, it's a different there's a qualifiable difference between suing someone and actually reporting a crime that's did all i did this shit when it came up uh, a few yeah. years ago when coppa first came back to youtube and they started enforcing it no i have not well, they, YouTube got slapped with a $700 million fine because the feds understood that they were not enforcing COPPA at all. That's what mm-hmm. changed a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically, by the book, she committed a crime. Now, the, here's the thing is, these people, and by the way, uh, as of de- as of Brittany Venti's, um, uh, on her, her reaction stream to my stream just yesterday, she basically said, we had a forum full of people, including Destiny, who helped craft all of these emails. So we're looking at 
Uh, think before you sleep. We're looking at Brittany. We're looking at Lauren. We're looking at Destiny. She admitted uh, that's your smoking gun. She said but that Rolo, Destiny was involved look. in all of this from the fucking but, get go. But Rolo, I don't want to look at any of these dysgenic, multi mutt bitches like Destiny, small little white guy. I could pro- look. Um, <laughs> I could probably put his heart into an arrhythmia. With one slap. Okay, Brittany Venti, the definition of a mystery mutt. I wouldn't see burka. I wouldn't even see face mask. I'm like, look, if I was put in a demon realm where uh, bitches without heads were trying to fuck me, maybe Brittany Venti, I'd finally fuck her. Maybe. Okay, who was the third one? I even, Lauren Southern? No, nah, there's no way. Like, I would rec- <laughs> recognize her by her fucking neck. Dude. These these people, I, I kind of want to uh, bring it up from the the specific level up to like a not a spiritual, but like in general, like Brittany Venti. The only reason anybody knows her, like, what's the reason anybody knows Brittany Venti? Her tits. That's the that's it. Like that's the only thing she has. And so in the end, I win. In the end, she's gonna hit an age. Where the titties are floppy, and there's another third black, third white, third Mexican chick with big tits that replaces her. And she's going to be screeching, and Brittany Venti is going to be in so much pain, because right now, right now she thinks all of her subs subscribe to her, because she's just that smart. Because what she says is just so interesting. Women never understand how men think. Like Brittany, so, Brittany, I'll, I'll, let me, let me give, I'll give you I'll give you my read on Brittany here. My read Go on ahead. Brittany is she's functionally autistic. OK, she is not uh, like the, the thing about destiny, the thing about Lauren, the thing about Brittany, the thing about everybody in these these circles is they are on various various stages of the autism spectrum well, disorders. Well, right? aut- so, well, autism is in, in, is, you know, um, let's say that you can curl 10 pounds, right? And I, I'm, I'm at the gym, and you're at the gym, and I'm curling like 80, and I look at you curling 10, and I go, oh, you're weak in the biceps. You're like, yeah, I'm weak in the biceps. Autism is basically a muscle weakness in social skill. Now, think about your average American woman when it comes to thinking about what men actually want, what men think. If you take autism and you say, let's change the definition of autism to you know, what women think men want, what women think men appreciate, what they value, 95% of women are autistic. Brittany Venti does not understand, she does not, she can't comprehend why men actually subscribe to her. If she was born with two cup size smaller, she would never get the sub she gets. There's no arguments. There's nothing. The, it's just I got big point, tits. It's, it's at the point right now where I'm looking at this. Like I was saying before, um, before Sandman left, is like the uh, the idea is this: is there's a coordinated effort right now to try to take down the biggest names to the point where they will go and try to get you, like to try to bait you into criminal acts. Because I'll tell you this: if I had made those documents public. I would have, I would have got owned for it in a much grander scale than I am right now for actually having believed that. And they knew that they had to do this. In fact, I think the one of the reasons <clears throat> why um, why uh, they they went public when they did was because Andrew Wilson got too close and point blank asked Destiny if he had fucked uh, Lauren Southern, and he couldn't give a, a, def- a discernible answer. I think that's what probably set off the uh, let's just go public with this now kind of thing. And rather than like waiting for me to go and and actually do it myself because they knew that I was never going to do it at that point. So now uh, I've got Brittany Venti saying, "Oh, Rolla was requesting you know CP from me," which is one hundred percent provably mm-hmm. false. I mm-hmm. actually rejected from her, but of course I saw she leaves that dude, out. Dude, she leaves the, the that Brit- out dude, of her. Yeah, dude, she the leaves Brittany that out Venti of her fans are tweeting out the screenshot where you say no. I'm yeah. like. This dude actually said, "No, I don't so want a picture." My, of a hey, Rollo, did you take out a police report uh, in 
Uh, my, in this uh, manner? Well, me and uh, me and uh, Glenn, my 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 producer here, Glenn, we uh, we filed a, we filed a report uh, in the state of, in in Texas that Good there man. had been that this is like there's a crime report, right? So whether or not they they're following up on it, I don't know. We went through the cyber crimes division, so there has been a crime reported in res, in respect to this. Now, again, people keep saying, "Oh, you're threatening a lawsuit." No, I'm not. I just filed the criminal uh, uh, report of crime. That's all I no, did. You're, you're covering your ass because this can be twisted to hurt you. So that's good. I'm glad that you did that. Now let's let's say this, right? So Rolo, you've been putting out content that Brittany Venti, old 26 year old, saggy titties, non virgin, dating a ma ex MGTOW, think before you sleep, dude, and Lauren Southern, a single mother who's a trap thought, they don't like it, right? Now Hammerhand, let me let me Sir. compare this to you. Come on. At the tops of any conflicts, it kind of represents the the mid level, what most of the people are fighting over. Rolo Tomasi here, Rolo here, he's dealing with the top levels of thoughts on the internet, and how are they attacking him? They're attacking him from an angle which, if he fails to defend the attack, what happens? The fucking cops come after him. Do you think that's similar to how the average man fails against the average woman? Yes. All they do is they take advantage of a system that has been constructed for them to use. Mm -hmm. And it's been going apeshit for the last seven or eight years. I just want you to know, Rolo, man, like, it's not like the, it's not the drama. It's not the tweets. It's not the your arguments, what you've done in the past, what I disagree with you with that makes me want to defend you. It's these women are trying to find a way to send the fucking feds after you. We literally had feds kill some 300 pound obese boomer up in the um, organ. That was horrible. Like yeah. roll up, bro. If, if you fell for one of their traps and the feds came after you. And for some reason, you didn't know they were coming because guess what? They don't tell you they're coming. I I would know that I've had the feds <laughs> called. On, hey, the, both of us. The feds showed up to my fucking house at three in the morning. My dog was barking. They were slamming the gate code. I was just happy they didn't break down the gate outside my house. I was like, oh, I rolled to the bed, showed up to them. I was just, I, the first thing I said is, they said, "Hey, we're from the Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI." And I'm, I was like, "Wait!" I was like, cr- getting the crusties out of my yeah. eyes. I'm like, "You know, you guys could have called me, you could have texted me, but no, they want an excuse to kill you." Yep. yep. So, Rolo, more or less, if, Rolo, if you were killed <laughs> by some police because Brittany Venti did some shit or Lauren Southern did some shit. They would they would have a celebration stream, kind of like how I had a celebration stream about Hunter Avalon's yeah. divorce. Well, they, with Kevin they would Sandy. be like cheering. Well, let Bob, me uh, right? let me see if I can because uh, I got to get going here. But let me uh, see if I can put like a final period on the end of this. Is that go ahead? This man. is this is collusion. Is what this is criminal collusion? Is what this is? I mean, in a in a sense, I like I'm not a lawyer, so I don't I don't even play one on the internet. But this is essentially criminal. It's, it's conspiracy. It's criminal collusion between at least four individuals that I know of, because Brittany admitted that they were involved in all of this from the beginning, including Destiny. And I got to point out that for the people who are keeping Destiny and they they think he's a legitimate, good faith actor, um, think twice about this before you have him on your podcast. Think twice about this before anybody actually works with this guy. This guy will go to the level of trying to commit fraud, trying to commit a criminal act. As I said before, it's not enough to just like get your t- get to get your YouTube taken down or your your uh, your Twitter to silence you. You have to go to jail. And that's what they were attempting to get me to do with all of this. It's yes. not even and so what's going to happen right now is like I'll tell you right what will happen right after this. You're in your comments. You'll have uh, people who will say Oh, well, Rolo's just coping because he got owned and he can't, he's an old man and he doesn't fucking uh, know how, uh, how to vet properly and to check his sources and everything. As I was saying earlier, I did exactly what I should have done. 
I had communication back. No, I no, fucking no, no. I'm not I, ag- not I ignored I ignored Britney Venti for the first month I don't before that, I even came I, I back get, to it. Dude, I don't get comments like that. Like people who I get people who disagree with you. Yeah, but you know what will happen though? The people will see you put my name in the title of this video. Yes. And they will say and then their crew will come here and they will brigade your comments because they want to run cover. There's- for Brittany Venti, they want to run cover for Lauren, or Lauren Southern my, and Destiny. At least from my experience, man, like mm-hmm. there'll be like maybe 20 or 30 simps that come in here. And mm-hmm. I don't ban them because the war band, this, this 1,200 people watching right now, they mm-hmm. they want to roast them and say shit like, your mom's fat and landed on your head as she gave birth, so now you're retarded. Like they, they could, you think I'm bad, man? Like the war yeah. band is out here. Like they don't care. They'll make another YouTube channel to make comments. But I, I understand what you're trying to say. Like there will be simps coming here say Rolo doesn't vet his sources. I'm like, look, like what do you expect? Do you think Rolo is a physician? You think Rolo is like, let me check up the EMR, the electronic medical record. I don't expect that from you. I'll roast you for other things, but I'm not going to roast you because you, you fell for a, a medical document. Like, bro, you. Let me, let me tell you something. I, 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 okay, so did I fall for the medical document? Yes, but only because it was actually a medical fucking document. It was the PDF that looked legit enough that it would have passed the smell test. And so what I get is I get this ridicule from a, a, a 26 year old girl who's going on 12 who wants to say well he just he, it was his wife i can't believe it ha 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 it's like you don't know that my wife is a fucking ct tech you dumb cunt so the whole it, it's just this ba- it's they're really kind of in damage control right now because i think a lot of people are beginning to see the fact that they this is uh, both of these are criminal acts by the way forging medical records is a criminal act as well so this is the level that they are willing to stoop just because I'm so fucking dangerous to them or the stuff that I talk about is so such a, an, an affront to their pathological little worlds that they will go and do months long scams, uh, hoaxes uh, uh, just to get just to, to bring down an individual that they just simply don't like. And that's, by the way, that's the new content right now. Yes, bringing you know, people you, down, exposing like, uh, them, and bringing them down, becoming being the downfall of a, a you know somebody who has you know a well respected person in whatever their sphere happens to be. Yeah, this well, is think, what they. What, this is their hobby. This what is what think, autistic what I, pathological personalities what do. I, yeah, what I think is this: it's not like these simps and these venti and southern fans are like, man, Rolo said this about women and this about the family courts. I disagree. So want to destroy him? That's not their motivation. Their motivation is. Rolo insulted my queen. It's 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 pure yeah. emotion. Oh yeah, like, it's, all, it's it's they, tribal. It's tribalism, is what they, it is. It's tribalism and and team sports at this point. Now imagine a tribe. Okay, imagine the tribe. Hammerhand, hammerhand. Imagine this, sir. Sir, my tribe versus another tribe in the tri- Venti's tribe. There's one woman and a thou and ten thousand simp's. And Undead Chronics tribe is just me. And 300 Brutus. Who's winning the fight? Well, you already well, know. Well, yeah. the thing is, it's like, I like they were saying this, they're laughing, they're laughing as they're saying this. It's like, Rolo will never be able to trust another email again, and he'll never be able to live this down. Ha ha ha. And it's like, yeah, because you guys committed basically two criminal acts and attempted to try to, and well, technically entrap me into committing one on my own. And I'll, let me tell you something. Had I not done what I did, had I accepted this stuff, had I actually been looking for this stuff, I, you, we'd be having a much different conversation right now yeah, because right I, I fucking played. They say, oh, you got played. Yeah. Well, if I got played, at least I fucking avoided the bullets that you were shooting at me trying to not just to take down my channel and silence my voice, but to put me in fucking prison. That's no, no, the dude, level that's, they're that's willing the- to go to. That's the best result. Like, it, mm-hmm. it, you could have been murdered. The feds could have gone to your place and shot you. Like, I've, I've experienced this. Three in the morning. If you don't answer that in a minute, they're kicking down your door. If I didn't answer that in the minute, I'm pulling out my firearm and I'm going to be like that fat guy up in Washington. I would have been killed by the feds. Brittany Venti's fans are trying to kill you. 
Like, I, that's not less, a hyperbole. Yeah. I truly believe Britney Venti's fans, the Britney Venti sphere, the my eyes are farther apart than the East is from the West sphere, was trying to murder you. More or less. I, I was going to say that, but see, that's the the level that they're willing to go. And that's yep. like it, what starts as this this hoax, what starts as this. I, I'm going to tell you this is I think that the reason why she included the fact that the the nudes, she was 17 in the nudes, is, was an attempt to bait me into taking underage porn well, from somebody I didn't know. It and so states the objective, doesn't so, it? So, so they're being offered, not fucking like, not like, just, oh, he was trying to get it over. Uh, no, no. One time offered 17 and under picks of herself, right? That didn't exist according to her. And it doesn't matter because the law says even if they didn't exist, what she's done is a criminal fucking act. So here's the thing is like, I don't, did they know that doing this? I don't know. I don't know if she's done this in the past, but I do know this is that like, if you go and you look at Kiwi farms and some of the old, or they're not there, that's gone now. But if you look at like the old archives, this is what they do. They have a history of doing exactly this shit. Yep. And that's, that's the level. And that's the degree to which these people will go to. And by the way, that's why uh, destiny is a fucking bad faith actor. And anybody who takes this dude seriously, should really fucking reconsider having them on their stream because you say the wrong thing, he's going to put his fucking brigade of guys on you or wh whoever to go and basically try to get you to commit a criminal act. You're convincing me to invite Destiny to another debate, man. Like, oh, Watch it, please do. Like, I guess it's different. Okay, here's please the thing. Like, I'm the odd man out here, Rolo. Like, mm -hmm. between me, you, and Hammerhand, I don't show my face. I do. I have so many layers between under chronic and the man who's speaking behind the microphone right now like they can try all their shit well unfortunately i can't do that i'm i'm a public figure more well, or too, less it's too late right now so, right like yeah, yeah exactly but but the, the, the point is the point i'm making is this is that this is i must be a real dangerous motherfucker if the this is the level that they're willing to go to and this is the extent like i mean we're talking months long here so it's not a troll it's not, haha, we got you and put one over on you. It's, we want you to go away. We want you gone. We want you dead or we want you in prison or we don't want it. It's not enough to I mean, silence I, you. I don't think the simps think you're dangerous or not. I'm not saying they don't think you're dangerous. I'm saying, like, it's not whether you're dangerous or not. It's just that you insulted their queen. Like, think about the <laughs> stupid shit dudes do for their one-itis females. Like, there's... Oh, yeah. Hammerhead, yeah. Hammerhead, how many men are in graveyards right now doing shit for women that did not care about them? Yeah. Or here's the other thing. How many people are in graveyards because other men went to bat for that woman who had the allegations against her? Like, well, let yep. you and him fight. Because that's essentially what this is on a mass scale. And by the way, this shit wouldn't have been able to, you know, this kind of effect wouldn't have been able to have been mobilized in any other time. Because what's happened right now is like pathological personalities attract other pathological personalities and nothing has been more, has facilitated that more than the internet forums, uh, big person, you know, cult to personality kind of stuff around uh, big figures and stuff. And so when I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these, the, you know, the, the effect that uh, the followership, like you're saying, they insulted you, insulted their queen. Yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of people who feel that way, but the people who are like orchestrating this, they're the ones who want you silenced. They're the ones who your presence in their, you know, reality distortion bubble is is offensive to because it challenges everything that their existence has been based on. So when I go and I challenge people with ideas, it's not enough to just have this debate of ideas and seeing who's got the better idea. It's if I don't like what you have to say and you're breaking my pathological world, I'm going to destroy you. Yep. I'm going to have to find some way to put you away so you're out of my world. Now, Rolo, when when I when I make the accusation and I say the powers that be support Brittany Venti, the powers that be support Lauren Southern. Yeah. They come from their own perspective. Brittany Venti is just like, what are you talking about? I was demonetized. And Lauren Thunder says, what are you talking about? I was banned from the UK. Guess what, bitch ass sluts? 
if Undead Chronic showed his face, you know where I'd be right now? I'd be in, I'd be I'd be getting gang banged by Tyrone. Okay, <laughs> I've lost thirteen fucking channels. Anybody that comes to me and says the feds don't support me because I was demonetized, suck my green dick, bro. Like, unless you've lost your channel completely 13, 14 fucking times, your candle you hold up to me is not intense enough to light up my fucking blunt. I smoke every night at 8 p.m., right? So the fact that Brittany Venti has never had a channel deleted from YouTube proves to me that there is some support by the feds because Hammerhand, how many channels have you lost? I guess Hammerhand's taking a piss. I think Hammerhand's lost like seven channels, man. I've no, I'm like, on I'm on number nine. Sorry, I, I was muted by accident. Number here. number nine. I've lost like 13, 14 channels. So Brittany Venti said, ah, Brittany Venti. The amount, dude, when Brittany Venti got banned from Twitter, the amount of videos I saw from the quartering, Tim Pool, Geeks and Gamers supporting her, it made me fucking puke. I was just like, that that was honestly that was the moment I was like, these guys are just fucking feminist sims. Like it is, I think uh, Rollo said he's got a bail. Get it, hey, Rollo. Ro- Ro- um, you got a bail, man. If you want to shout anything out, bro, shout it out before we, uh, before you get out of here. Is he gone? Yeah, I think he's he's history. He's out. Sorry, I got <laughs> I got on a tirade. I should have no him fucking a shit. <laughs> and this is how he feels. It's like, dude, like people are like, oh, bro, I got demonetized once. I'd be like, wait, what do you mean demonetized? I lost monetization. What's monetization? You know, you make money from posting YouTube videos. I'm like, you, you can make money from posting YouTube videos. <laughs> it's like, holy shit, man. I know, Hammerhand. Hammerhand, how much time do you have left? Have you got to bounce out of here? Let me know if you got to leave soon. Yeah, I got to take off. Uh, I'm not trying to, but uh, yeah, I've been on here for about three hours, so it's about time to to take off. But my goodness, was this ever uh, illuminating? I was trying to. Chronic was like in an airship, right? I was trying to pull Rolo Tomasi up. I'm like Rolo. I don't care about the details. Like I know on Twitter, I know in the comment sections, the people say my details, my details. I don't care. Like because he was arguing against thoughts. I'm like, look, bro. I, I was Venti fans. I, I don't. Uh, they're they're full of shit. Lawrence of the fans are full of shit. Tell me what happened in general, right? I didn't give a rat's ass that it was uh, Tomasi on here. What I cared about was the fact that uh, somebody was trying to arrange a campaign against him. To get him murdered or jailed. That's what, That's I, what I cared. That's I'll what I care about. It, dude, I'll put a clip out. I'll probably force Grey Ghost or Chaz or Manic to take the clip from this live stream. But, dude, these, these fucking whores are trying to murder men on YouTube. That's what... That's what Ro, Ro, I, I feel like in Hammer... Give me your opinion on this. I don't think Rolo understands the threat to his life. I don't think that I don't think anybody on that side of things in that little pocket has ever been targeted the way that you've been targeted or that I have been or that Sandman was. The whole point of Lauren Southern targeting Sandman with a lawyer wasn't to get legal action, it was to dox him. And that's what that I was got. the point. I'm trying to think of another person we had on the show that was just talking a lot. Um, I mean, I tried multiple times. I'm like, look, bro, like, larger picture here. I would have much rather preferred, like, me, you, Sam, and Rolo talk about, like, the generality of the fact that women want to use a police state against them. Well, the maybe. fact that simps will, like, do anything to kill the men who go against their queens. That kind of stuff, but... i got to be honest with you, man. I, I don't think that... I, 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 don't, I, don't, I can't tell you what Tomasi thinks or what those other guys over there think. I, I can say that I think that that is an uncomfortable subject for them. It's uncomfortable subject matter because I don't think that they're used to it. They hear about it. They understand that it happens, but it's not often directed at them. It is often every single day directed at you, directed at me, directed at Sandman, directed at Lion of MGTOW, whoever else is roaming this circle trying to help men out. 
Well, they don't want you to help men out. Let me just read the most recent death threat. I'm going to go to oh, my Google. give it up. Yeah, I mean, let me go to my Gmail, uh, zombiekush05 at gmail.com. Let me just type in kill. Oh, this one was from two days ago. The title of this email is, I hate you, Undead Chronic. <laughs> Get to the point, would you? Okay, okay. Here's the text. Undead Chronic, you have never had a woman love you before in your entire life. You are a disgusting incel that spawned from... <laughs> I haven't read this yet, bro. I'm not... No lie. I wish I could stream this to you. No lie. You are a disgusting incel that spawned from the fag goat sphere, a.k.a. Hammerhand and Sandman McDowell. The for goats! <laughs> The fur goats are all over it, baby. <laughs> I know where you live. You're in Denver, Colorado. I'm going to get my friends and we're going to go to the gun store and get what we need to deal with you. <laughs> Look, bro. Hammerhand. If you have to go to the gun store to mm -hmm. deal with someone, mm -hmm. you have no experience with the weapons you're buying. That's correct. Okay, let's continue. You are a fat ass incel living in your grandmother's basement. We're going to, um, I can't say this, but uh, do things and insert things inside right. of your grandmother in front of you before we end your life. F you, you forgot on the chronic. We're coming. P.S. Make a will. I had three of those comments in one of my most recent community posts right along those lines. So yeah, it happens constantly, constantly. If I went out in this world getting yeeted by some comps because I was choking, not even choking out like, look, I was, um, accepted to the Naval Academy and they did a lot of physical tests and my grip strength was higher than any of the officers or soldiers on or in the Naval Academy. It's not like I'm choking someone out. I'm breaking their fucking spine at their neck. If you break yes, someone's spine in the cervical region of the spine, it's over. Well, yeah, it's but like after you break it, like it's not just like oh he I I know he's dead. It's whatever. No, no, you 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 just keep on going. If I died doing that to someone that said those things to my face, and the cop shot me, hey, it's okay. I'm a cool. I'm cool. That's a good death to me. You are a man of your convictions, sir. <laughs> your last thing I'm gonna say before I get shot and die. Yes, sir. Shout out Hammerhand McTow. <laughs> I get shot with a shotgun. <laughs> no, bitch. Like, don't say that shit because all I'm, I said, I told you so. The cops are just like, the fuck did he say? Like, what the fuck was that about? <laughs> oh, man. You know, it. none of none of this surprises me. See, I, I was not aware of most of that. I was aware of the, the angle that they were trying to pursue him with, with trying to get him to accept CP. But uh, none of this surprises me. None of this. So, And that's, that's why I say that th those fellas over there, even though they drop red pills from time to time, they're still immersed in a type of gynocentrism that keeps them there. Th th they're not moving away from it. They're moving closer to it. Well, it's almost like they, they recognize... They, they took the Red Pill 101 class. They took the Red Pill 200 class. Me and Hammerhand are in the lab trying to like win the Nobel Peace Prize of Red Pill. And they listen to what we say and they go... I, I, they don't even respond to it. They're just doing the general stuff because they got more, the more ears, more audience, more people listening. And there is a certain function where it's like, you know, I'm sure Rolo Tomasi has done more good than bad, right? He's introduced a lot of people to Mo Red Pill. But, like, it's not just Red Pill. It's not just women do this. It's not just family courts. 
It's not just hypergamy. It's not just politics. The way I see it is like, Hammerhand, me and you and the Warband, and honestly, the first one I think of besides us, you and the Warband is LOM. Yeah. We're aware of the spiritual war going on. It's a spiritual war. And it's just hard for the normies or like, you know, Rolo to recognize that because he's not in that sphere. He doesn't have that vision. I'm not saying he's not useful or he's stupid. I'm just saying like you you don't know you, you see ten steps ahead. Hammerhand, L O M, RPM, Sandman. We're we're looking like a hundred years ahead. 80, 50 years ahead, twenty years ahead. Yeah, Bubba. Yeah. Yeah. Look, that. that's the truth, man. That's the truth. Um, you don't ever do anything with myopia. You don't do anything sh- short sightedly. You have to look ahead to see the permeations of the steps uh, of everything that you're doing. And <laughs> right. Right. Do. Ryan Turner says, Chronic says, famous last words, consider donating to PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. Pay I mean, for your it's, funeral, it's right? It's such a meme, but they portrayed me so bad I could never do it. I think what the new meme is, if you want to support the show, consider donating the cash app, and then I can't, I get shot in the head, and I can't no even shit, finish right? it. No shit. I think, uh, I think that this should be a very valuable lesson to people, but you know, I, I, almost everybody's going to take the wrong lesson from it. You know, they're still going to think that they can control these people. They're still going to think that they can manipulate them. They're still going to think that they can go out there and game them and frame them and get that pussy. (laughs) And you should be moving away from them. I know that that's not your plan. I know that goth is kryptonite for you. But everybody that's engaging in this, man, you're giving somebody a free pass. And and that pass could be the one that uh, killed you. I got good news for you. And after I tell the good news, I need to go take a piss. I'm uh-huh. not going to go in the bathroom. I'm just going to open my window, but still. You do um, what you got to do, brother. <laughs> I don't want to hear it, though. I, I'll mute the mic. Um, It's almost the more I hang out with Hammerhand, the more women betray me. It's not just like from a logical standpoint. It's more like an emotional standpoint. Goodness. The closer I get to... It's not monk mode. It's not. It's definitely no cohabitation. Yes, no marriage. Yes, no children. That's the only one I'm stickler on. So I've actually been talking to surrogacy agencies. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Can I buy a surrogate in like three years or four years? Because I know the the way the the monies the currencies are gonna go. It's cheaper to buy it now. <sighs> Take a loan out. I'm like, you know. If I ended up alone on a ranch in Montana or Colorado with five kids born from surrogacy, I'm I'm fine. Like there's there's no like there's there's no negative influence. But if I end up on a ranch in Montana with no kids and nothing, it's like ten percent less satisfactory to me. Yeah. But Hammerhand, talk Sir. to the young men on my channel. About having kids or not, because the young men are just like, I don't have kids. Hammerhand, you have kids. I want kids. What's going? Make town. Talk to them about that. I'm gonna go piss on my window and try to hit my neighbor's cat. I'll be back Do in like two thing. minutes. Do you think. Don't piss on the kitty. So, I don't know. I, I, what is there to say? Uh, yes, I have. I've had kids. Uh, I still have my son. And the thing that I would say the most is. You don't, you don't know what it feels like to, from one day to the next, have complete control, or you think complete control over your life and your progeny, your children, and then all of a sudden, you don't. Then all of a sudden, somebody else gets to write that story. They get to tell you how this ends, and they don't need your permission. They don't need anything from you. They've got all of the help that they need coming out of it. Everybody's gonna everybody's gonna stick a hand out. Everybody's gonna say to them, We got you, sis. Do you you need to swear out a protective order? Does he seem like he's angry? Did he threaten you? 
Did you throw a plate at his fucking face and he got mad? We can use that. It happens all the time, guys. All the time. I understand the drive and the need and the want to have kids. I get it. I get it. But if I could be completely neutral about it and go back and know what I know now, I'd never take my son away. But hell, the temptation is there. To avoid all of that persecution, to avoid all of that pain, all of those days where you don't get to be a dad? Yeah, man, it's not fair. It's not fair. But then again, life is not fair. It's not fair. Uh, Josie Lee Warrior? Josie Lee Warrior? Kids cripple your masculinity? Uh, No, they don't. Kids improve you in every way, shape, and form. If you want to be a dad or you want to be a mom, your kids are an improvement to your life. They're, they don't cripple you at all. That's I don't agree with that at all. You back, boy? Okay, Hammer, you had to bounce out of here, right? Yeah, man, I got a jet. Go ahead, man. Uh, shout out your channels. Shout out your comments. Shout out whatever you need. And I got here. Uh, you, you guys know uh, where the channels are. No biggie. But no, like I said. They man, don't know where the channels are. We got a thousand Gregas in the chat. They don't know who. Still. Hammer man, there's still a thousand in here. Shit. Uh, you know where it's come on, man. Everybody knows where the channel's at. Hey, you, uh, and you, you, you guys have been posting see, the link. Hammerhand, you're going to say that once they get viral. <laughs> and then people going to be like, no, I don't. <laughs> Uh, they're posting the links. Thank you very much. Uh, and I wanted to say this it's big up to the fucking chat, man, when we were over 1,200. But uh, the two of you motherfuckers were sucking the oxygen out of the room, and I couldn't get a word in edgewise. So, yeah, big ups. I, I should have just... It, honestly, it was the most difficult. Like, I'm trying to break it up. I'm like, yo, Sandman, say this. Hammerhand, say this. I think the problem is... um. Isn't like like Rolo's ignorant. Rolo's full of himself. I think Rolo is used to talking by himself with himself for like five hours a stream. Yeah, I agree with you. And I you agree. With you. He has to be thorough, and being thorough takes time. I mean, you see that with me. Like when when I have Mac on a stream or Chaz on a stream or Gregos on a stream, I do like eighty percent of the talking. Just because it's what you used to. It's like, hey, I got to entertain the fans. I got to do this, this, and this. I got to keep the... I can't keep it quiet. It's understandable. Yeah, agreed, 100%. I, I don't hold that against him at all. You know, it, to me, it was a very informative stream, and I think that there's a lot of things that you can take from this. And the number one thing is, is as soon as you step on the wrong side of somebody, you, you probably don't even know it, they're already planning your death. Yeah. So... I need to, what I need to do is, um, have you seen noodling, like noodling in Louisiana or South Carolina or Georgia? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I need to do to get Sandman to commit to like a monthly stream. Like this day of the month, every month we get Sandman on. Because even if I just said under chronic talk to Sandman about X, I get 800 people live listening. I get a lot of people. (laughs) Well, I think maybe we need to let him talk a little bit more. You know, that's, that's that trying, still seems what, to be an issue. Yeah, that's so. what I'm saying, man. Like, if it was just me, if it was just me, you, and Sandman, it would be an even split. Or if I just walked away, it'd be like you and Sandman doing pretty good together. But it's, I think it's because Rolo doesn't have a lot of people on. Um, I think the people that he has on are, like, deference or, like, low-key worshipping him. So they don't want to interrupt him at all. It was like well, me and you, me and you would interrupt him, but Sam was just chill in the background. But it's all good. It's all good. It was a great stream. Like I'm very, great stream. I'm very conscious of when people are talking, and I try to listen to them. But I mean, if you've got like two, three, four, five minutes of just no air in the room, sometimes you have to speak up and interrupt it. And I'm also conscious of that when I'm talking. So I take a break and I try to let folks get in there and, and put their points across and kind of go around the table a little bit. But uh, that's, that's still a problem with a lot of panels, but I didn't think that it was a real issue here, man. I mean, it's a little annoying, but there's a lot of good information from this stream. So gents, I think it's more about like reading the room kind of thing, but hammerhand, Please, for the love of God, shout out your graphic comic. Tell us what's going on. 
Well, I've got some uh, announcements forthcoming, but I can't drop them right now. Um, I can't do it right now. I have to make sure that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and all of that good shit and that the deal is done before I announce it. I, I don't want to, you know, fall on my fucking face. But it's another, I'm telling you right now, if you know anything about comics, the mainstream comics, no, this is not a mainstream comic, but this is somebody that has worked everywhere and done everything. I mean, and I told, uh, I told you how the son my of local, a bitch. I told you how my local comic shop wanted to like publish my comic, right? No, no, oh, you didn't. Dude, I was like showing my local comic. It's like a little comic store. It's local. They do a lot of the indie or like old comics because most of the comics I buy from the eighties or nineties, like weird, succubus, sexual, violent. Comics. Yeah, the horror comics, right? Yeah, horror comics. Yeah. And um, I showed the owner. A bunch of the images from both comic books, like the one I released now, uh, Tea Springs, go to the Tea to get the comic book, mm-hmm. and the other one, which is probably done in like three years, because I got a hit of the artist again. And he's like, "Dude, we would love to do like a local event where like you release a comic, we got a stack of like a hundred, and you're there to sign them." And I told him, "Like, look, man, I love your business." I buy from your business. I send pictures from the comic books. I buy from business to my comic book artist. But if I was here and people knew the owner of that comic that came out was here, your comic book store would get firebombed. Yes. It, was, that's like, the unfortunate what? truth. Yes. He was like, he was like, what? I'm like, yeah, my political, I told him like, my political enemies would have no bad feelings about burning this store to the ground. So even if I made a couple hundred more bucks doing a physical release here, it's not worth it for you and me. No, it's not. And, you know, uh, we've had this conversation before, man, where we have uh, folks that approach. They've got one, two, three, five million subs. And I always try to warn them off. I mean, as soon as you as soon as you put my face on your stream, it's going to fuck with your channel. So, I mean, I don't. I say. Yeah, show my shit. I'm great. I'm vanilla for YouTube. Please yeah, have sure. me in your stream. <laughs> and I go on the stream and go, hey, I'm under chronic cash out slash cash shine under chronic. That's cash out slash cash shine under chronic. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> man, I had a great time tonight, man. Thanks for having me on. This was informative. Awesome. Hey, got it your hammer hand. We'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll do a post-op discussion in the future this weekend. Peace, gang. Appreciate you. Peace, man. Bye. Then there was one, one more band. You guys want another segment? Let me play the comic ad first. If you guys want to support the show, if you want to support the war band, consider donating to Cash App slash Cash Shine Under Chronic. That's Cash App slash Cash Shine Under Chronic. The link is pinned. Let's play the comic ad, and then I'll talk about the comic for like a minute, and then we'll go to the segment because you guys want to see it. Violence is the only way to achieve victory over evil. There are no terms in which the rotting masses with their bloodlust and greed will be satiated. The Pseudomon arrived to these already war-stricken lands and found a banquet of guts and carrion to please their appetites. The gluttonous ways of the rich and the proud rulers led to their people's demise. The scum that made their lands weak were just as much to blame as the invaders. Both will fall to the sword. There are no heroes in this story. At least not those who participated in it can recall. But perhaps... You can decide for yourselves. A robed figure makes his way through the mott with his mycelium mate. A hooded rider prepares his worthy steed for a perilous journey, while another introduces his to debauchery and the joys of a tavern. In a noble's keep, A mechromancer takes his vows of magehood. 
I, meanwhile, work the precious monk forge, being watched by my ginger companion. Little did I know at the time, I was to get a weapons order that would change the course of history. Once more unto the breach, my good friends. Well, goddamn, I gotta get stuff to do. I gotta do stuff, but since we have 832 Gregas in the stream, I guess I'm obliged to do a response video or a segment or two. Let me get rid of the hammer hand icon. Let's get to this one. What we see here. Incredible stream, boys. They have a Melina from Elden Scrolls, Smekstall. Um, Okay. Uh, meets back on the menu. Let me adjust this. Okay. I gotta get the uh, the comments on my phone because I only got two screens now. Oh man. This chick. This dude, chick, this chewed, a chick dude. Let's get this right. Oh, man. I'm sorry if you stayed this late, guys. It's about to get real gross. I gotta chug the rest of this white claw before I do this. Ah, damn! I gotta smoke some weed right now. <laughs> Damn, that Kush hits good. <laughs> oh, that Buddha's that Buddha's listening right now. Understand how much Chronic loves his marijuana. You Buddha's listening from the first channel. Press F in the chat if you were here from the first channel. I just want to know. Don't lie. Gregas, don't lie. Please don't lie. I just want to see what Gregas are here from the first channel. I, I'm just I'm just interested in that. Um, yeah, salt says F. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if you guys saw it on the Crocs first channel, I would get stoned beyond belief <laughs> and then start fucking talking on a mic. Yeah, I had scripts. I was always fucked up. I stayed fucked up. Derek says, what are you smoking, Chronic? Um, it's an oil pod. It's like, I don't know, it's like fucking... You know what I just realized? You know what I just realized, guys? When, if I ever do extracts and sell oil pods, if I sell an oil pod that's like massive sativa... I'm going to call it Grey Ghost. Because <laughs> if you... What the fuck was that? Yeah, your boy is... Your boy is twisted, guys. Your boy's twisted. He's drunk and high. At the same time... Uh, yeah, we'll call it Grey Ghost. Because if you don't ghost it... You a bitch. I gotta get this, uh, 
I gotta get a couple outro songs ready because I won't be sober enough to deal with it in like 10 minutes to be honest I'm sorry I gotta get ready before I do the segment guys I'm fucked up what this bitch texting me what are you doing tonight I started the stream so early <laughs> I started the stream so early I fucked up by like what the before 10 o'clock god damn yeah, that means bitches want to get this green dick. <laughs> let me hit her up. Let me let me hit her up. I'm doing fine. I'd be more fine if a fine girl was at the bar. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this bitch be like, "What? There's no fine girls at the bar, but not like you." And then the bitch goes to the bar, and then I'm, she's gonna show up. I'm sloppy drunk. I'm gonna puke on her shoes. She'd be upset. I say, "I'm sorry. I'll pay for new ones." She's like, "Oh, that's cool. You got money." And then she goes back to my place, and then I bang the bitch, and then I never talk to her again. Okay. <laughs> it's your comeback. I, I'm telling you guys the plans of a Griga. I'm just trying to educate you dudes on how to get pussy when you're fucked up. That's all. Like, Chronic, why you be talking about how you bang bitches in the bar? Because there's dudes out there that be like, Chronic, how do I bang it's your bitches comeback. in the bar? <sighs> Yeah, I'm at the end of my rope. I'm at the end of my alcohol tolerance rope. You caught me. Big deal. What? Uh, fuck you. What was in the chat? I wouldn't wish sobriety on my worst enemy. <laughs> oh, what else you got here? Tasha Pie says, wow, that's not smooth. Well, Tasha Pie, when I used that line the last time, I got into some smooth puniti. So when it comes to dudes trying to bang bitches, seeing how you're a female, you know, you know we, do, we got different experiences. You'd be like, that's not smooth, but I guarantee you, Tasha Pie, you are more sober than me. Uh, Channel 1800 Dumb says, Haha, Chronic is getting lit. Chronic is lit as fuck. Chase says, Ho needs schlong. Absolutely. Look okay, at here. David says, Get some whiskey for my frog. I swear to God, guys. The next time me and Ribby meet up, I'm getting him so hammered, he needs to go to the hospital. PK's Dink Den says, Chronic's taking me back to my old days. Um, Blocks Bricks Gamer says, Chronic's a POA now. I, I'm not charging you. I'm giving the advice for free. Oh, shit. I forgot. Pick a <laughs> Super Chats. I need to get to the Super Chats, guys. We got some Brutas decide to be generous with their wallets tonight. What we got here? Soma BT says for Puniti. Thank you, Soma, for your generous super chat donation. Aaron the Kruger Jaeger says Takake. Takake, that means to fight. We will fight, Aaron Jaeger. Tasha Pai says for money emoji for Grigas for women. I don't know what you're trying to say, Tasha. And then uh, this one's from Drizzle. I do, bro. You, mu why is your name so long? If your name's that long, why do you expect a drunk Griga, a high Griga, tell you what that name sounds like? He says, "Got the FN F10 or FN510. It's a 10 millimeter. Wendigos have a thick skin." When it comes to Wendigos, you just have to. You just have to dap up, guys. Like, yeah, I'll use the 12 gauge. I'm trying to buy a 10 gauge. It's just hard to find one that's a reasonable price. 
But at the end of the day, the one that kills your team, it slaps a gun in your hands. You got to use the special Indian sacrificial dagger to kill it. I'm just saying, like, Wendigo, you can't, you can't be doing this shit. <laughs> what was a Wendigo? Let me shoot it with a 9 mil. Bitch, you trying to shoot a, a Wendigo with a Glock? Get the fuck out of here. What are you, what are you Tyronius, trying to, trying to fight the ops on his block? I got to take a drink to that. Shout out to Tyrone is trying to fight the ops on his block. Long drag here. Oh. Love me my oil cartridges. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Let's get to this fucking segment. I told you guys. I asked, uh, what, what was the poll? Do you want segments after the guests leave? 90% say yes. So it's time for a segment. Oh, this bitch. Oh. I'm not stretch on my back for this bitch. So we have a returning hater, Hannah Reloaded, with 16k subs. She is a trans woman that really doesn't like Undead Chronic. Does she want to debate me? No, because she knows I'm wrong. Does she want to have a talk with me? No, because she knows I'm. Uh, she knows she's wrong. But she, you know, her fiance showed up. She's like, "My fiance is a scientist. You're wrong because my fiance is a scientist." That was her main argument against me. Trans woman, leftist, communist, military veteran, whatever. You're a feminist. That's a strike. You're a veteran. That's a strike. You're a uh, gender ideology individual. That's a strike. And then you talk shit about Undead Chronic? And you don't even respond to him? That's a strike. Four, four strikes. I can't have four strikes and expect my respect. Unless you would... She slash he has to say, I'm going to call her a she because I respect their gender ideology on YouTube. So I don't get banned. If I had free speech, it'd be different. But hey, this is a woman. This is a trans woman. Oh, we're on YouTube, so I can say this. You guys want to see some incel shit? Hannah is trying so hard to sound like a woman. It's actually pathetic. Let's watch some incel stuff. So I got banned off of Twitter for a week, suspended, whatever, for like... This is that undead chronic guy. A week, yeah, it was for a week, but now it's like four or three days. But the tweet I put out before, like, I think it was like two hours before I got kicked off for a week, has popped off. I said the word. I Imagine how bad you have to be to get banned, suspended from Elon Musk Twitter. It's really not that hard. You see, if your uh, testes are functional and you uh, operate in the region of logic, it's pretty easy to get banned off of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of it. <laughs> I'm on Blue Sky, by the way. Hannah Reloaded on Blue Sky. Feel free to look me up. Say don't look it up. It's not worth. It's not worth looking it up. Spread the word, and I attach the image I use at the top left of my YouTube videos every day. No hymen, no diamond. Spread the word. No hymen, no diamond. Pop cherry. Don't marry. Now, is there a way you can stream both at the same time? No, that is against Twitch terms of service, unfortunately. Otherwise, yeah, I'd stream both always if I could, but Twitch if doesn't allow partners or 
um, affiliates video. <laughs> Construing of what I mean here. People will... I don't think Blue Sky is public, no. I have a private account. But anyone who's in, find me. You should make everything about your social media private. You should. For me and for you. Not understand the meaning of the message of the meme. If you join the Discord, after I after I give my what after that, I'll maybe pass them out first in line. Like how long? No, if a woman's a virgin, but she was born without a hymen, that means that she doesn't uh, qualify. Now, this 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 mean basically means if she's not a virgin, do not marry her. Sir, we understand your sexist, weird incel bullshit. It's sexist. So a physical characteristic. Why is a biological male upset about a biological male's standards for biological females? Here's why. Hannah Reloaded has never had a hymen. She, quote unquote, she will never have a hymen. That's why she's so upset about this. She, it, you know, it's just a, it's like saying, I need a firearm that can shoot more than 20 rounds a minute. And Hannah Reloaded here is a musket. And she is going to get offended because she will never shoot 20, 20 rounds a minute. I'm not talking about you. I know you truly believe you could fight for qualifications here, but you have never had a hymen. That is a... I, I don't even know what I could bet. I would bet everything. My life, my gonads, my money, my bank account, my face, my identity. I'll bet it all that a trans woman never had a hymen. Yeah. It just it kind of bumps up against the biological reality that she is lying to herself. But let's continue. It's not that we don't understand what you're saying, it's that what you're saying makes us laugh at you. Do you guys agree? It's not uh, what you say makes me laugh at you. It's worse than that for you, though, Hannah. Who you are makes me laugh at you. How you sound makes me laugh at you. What you look like makes me laugh at you. What clothing you wear makes me laugh at you. That's the basic things. Your opinions make me laugh at you. Your ideology makes me laugh at you. Your YouTube channel makes me laugh at you. Everything about you is a lull. There's low cows. You're a lull pig. You are a pig. I agree. Yep. yep. Okay. Now, uh, most of the time I kind of like say, why is she no hymen, no diamond? Uh, my, 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 my girlfriend rode horses for five years and there was like a strap on on the saddle of the horse and she rode it for five years, but she's still a virgin. That kind of stupid shit. Does he not know that, does he genuinely not know how anatomy works? Does he... I have had more training in anatomy that you have had interactions with your father. I have studied anatomy more than you have actually seen your father face to face. That's a fact. I would bet that. I know how anatomy works. I could have gotten a PhD in human anatomy, but I didn't want to spend another year at the college I was studying. But let's listen to the leftist bread tuber trans woman YouTuber tell me I don't understand anatomy. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. 
Does he think that only the insertion of a penis can- Whatever, holy shit. You can't get too bogged down in the incel shit. Cause it's all nonsense. You'll be here all day if you start trying to point out all the wrong. <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk. Let, let's listen to the trans woman talk to us about biology, and tell the scientist that he is wrong. Let's do it. <laughs> Laugh and move on. I might just get aggressive with it. I'm like, no, no, no. I actually mean no hymen or diamond. They have to have a hymen, and they have to be a virgin. Because I need to know. I need to see physical evidence. I haven't gotten yep. there yet. You know, if there's a woman born without a hymen or imperforate hymen, but she's a virgin, fine. What tests can we run to test for virginity? None. There is no test that you could do that would accurately tell you that. I can think of three. I could think of three right now. But you are so ignorant, you are so uneducated with your trans-liberal ideology, you are going to laugh at it. You remind me of Hunter Avalone losing his shit because I said there's phytoestrogens in the water. You have no... It's not just I don't like liberals. It's not just I don't like woke stirs. It's not just I don't like progressive. It's because they disgrace science left and right. They they act like they know science mm. due to their ideology. Look, Hannah, Miss Trans Queen of YouTube, you do not want to challenge me on biology. You do not. I will take your little fantasy world and I will crush it in my hands like a seashell in the hands of a toddler. A male toddler with the sex chromosomes XY that will never question his gender. Do not challenge me on that. Nor should it fucking matter. What is wrong with them? Do you guys know of any? No. no. Uh, observation. He thinks the hymens are a thing that actually physically blocks the vagina. <laughs> are you telling me that hymens do not block the vagina? Now, I understand that you don't understand... The difference between a vagina and a uterus, you don't understand what a cervix is because you, you, know, you, you, you don't have a cervix. You don't have a uterus. You don't have a vagina. But as a biologist, I'm telling you the hymen literally blocks the cervix. It blocks between 40 and 60% of the vagina. It blocks the uterus. But it, this isn't a... This is, this is not an anatomical debate because me debating Hannah Reloaded about anatomy is like me debating a three-year-old about ice cream. He wants ice cream 20 times a day. That's not good for you. Why? It's against my beliefs. You see, a three-year-old's beliefs is, I want to be happy. I want ice cream. Hannah Reloaded's beliefs is, why? I want to be an enlightened feminist trans woman. It's against my beliefs. I want to be happy. Hannah, you will never be happy. I hope to... I pray to God I see your downfall on YouTube. It's actually painful for me, guys. Good God. You wanted a segment? I give you a segment, but damn. Let's do a, a comment raid. Undead. Here we go. There 
Here we go. It's comment raid time. We're going to raid it, but just with the comment section, guys. Undead Chronic Mogs You on Biology. If you're on YouTube, go to the link and copy and paste Undead Chronic Mogs You on Biology. That's all you got to do, guys. That's all you got to do. I'll be back. I think I'll do one more segment from that video. But I could go take a piss, bros. I could go take a piss. And then we'll end the stream. Okay? One more comic outro if you want the comic, guys. 15 bucks. I think it's like 13 bucks. Support the war band. Support us fighting the transgender ideology. Support us fighting Brittany Venti and her floppy titties. Support us fighting Lauren Southern and her single motherhood. Mods put the link to the Teesprings in the chat. Let's watch this comic show one more time and then we'll get to it. Violence is the only way to achieve victory over evil. There are no terms in which the rotting masses with their bloodlust and greed will be satiated. The Pseudomon arrived to these already war-stricken lands and found a banquet of guts and carrion to please their appetites. The gluttonous ways of the rich and the proud rulers led to their people's demise. The scum that made their lands weak were just as much to blame as the invaders. Both will fall to the sword. There are no heroes in this story. At least not those who participated in it can recall. But perhaps... You can decide for yourselves. A robed figure makes his way through the mott with his mycelium mate. A hooded rider prepares his worthy steed for a perilous journey, while another introduces his to debauchery and the joys of a tavern. In a noble's keep, a necromancer takes his vows of majorhood. I, meanwhile, work the precious monk forge, being watched by my ginger companion. Little did I know at the time, I was to get a weapons order that would change the course of history. Once more unto the breach, my good friends. Okay. Another trans woman BTFO segment coming up. So we have a trans, communist, leftist, I don't care. Like, I I just don't care about what they believe. Because they're broken as an individual. They're broken as a biological specimen. They're broken. They're scared of Undechronic. It's been confirmed. They're scared of me. I have green skin. They're probably racist. Hannah Reloaded is racist. Will be the title of the segment. She is racist. She 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 is so racist against green skin. She won't even talk to a green skin. Let's see what she slash he slash it whatever has to say. I got a theoretical test, and this is only if she's taken a zinc. You um, do a genetic sampling of her and look for white chromosome evidence, microchimerism. Mm. Uh, part of Wait, 
he thinks that if he finds a woman who has no hymen, they might be intersex? That is such a... Sh micro chimerism. Um, I'm sorry. I need to explain my disappointment in terms that normies can understand. Because most of you guys are normies when it comes to genetics. But micro chimerism does not mean intersex. Intersex means you are between sexes. It means that you don't have two sex chromosomes. You either have more than two or one that is not functioning. Micro, micro means smaller. Chimerism means it's DNA other than yourself or your partner or your parents. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm staring at the wall to dissipate the stupid that I just heard. It's understandable. But Hannah, didn't, didn't, didn't your fiance come onto my YouTube channel? Didn't you didn't you say your fiance was getting a PhD in, in biology? Yeah. I would be teaching two years three years ago. Do you know what I was doing, Hannah? I was determining, I was judging what PhD students would graduate. Now, I know you don't understand what that means, but ask your fiancé. You probably don't have her because, you know, lesbian relationships don't last long, and I'm going to consider you a woman. <laughs> Let's continue. What? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, what? You don't know what you're talking about. You you dysgenic, dysphoric, gaps in your teeth, fool. Includes like taking brain matter, and I'm not trying to make the future mother of my children like lobotomized. So, okay, it's let's see the responses. So this this thing has like fifty five thousand views on Twitter because people are losing their mind about this. Yes, when you say stupid things, people will call you stupid. I mean, you are an extremely stupid. Well, I'll say uneducated. You don't know anything about biology. You don't even know what a cell is. You don't. You don't know what an organelle is. But we have someone not you know, doesn't can't, can't even name two organelles telling me I'm stupid. It's the way of the left. I mean, this dude wants to be a woman, and women talk about shit they don't understand. So I understand why this dude wants to be a woman because he slash she is talking about shit they don't understand. This isn't a hot take. Pretty sure this is a known thing. Nick Adams' entire career on Twitter is built off of it. Right? 162 retweets, quotes, likes, bookmarks. Um, let's look at the quotes first. Sandman says, good luck finding virgins these days. He thinks women absorb DNA from sperm cells into her body and it becomes DNA. Oh my god. I mean, it's debatable. It's a debate. It's not just like, oh my god, you're so stupid. <laughs> There's a debate. You don't understand debate because you sit in your Twitch hug box with leftists probably mostly trans women that agree with you. The idea that there is contention is so... The idea that your father tells you you are a man is so uncomfortable for you. You refuse to acknowledge it. You can't under... It's like a fish living in the Sahara. Disagreements make you uncomfortable. That's why you became a trans woman, a beautiful trans woman, an enlightened trans woman. That's why you're doing what you do. 
It's understandable for me because I understand your mental illness. <laughs> you know, I do think there is a career potential for you to act in Macbeth to be the witch voices. You could be a witch easily. You got the voice down. Understandable. Um, but it's not impossible. Hey, Mac. Mm hmm. Good luck finding a good deal on a dirt bike. I feel like I'm missing out on an experience. Baja, we need to figure out a... You're missing out on a lot. But it's mostly in your brain, and you're over the age of 30, so there's nothing I can do to change your brain. You are lost in the ideology. You are lost in the corruption. Whatever. I don't... Here's the thing, Hannah. Like, I'm not trying to convince you to change. I don't care about you. I do not care about you. You are an instrument. I use you to make fun of my enemies. You are representative of my enemies. So, bye bye, Miss Beautiful Trans Woman. I'm going to move on. Good God, that was difficult for me, guys. Oh, that was bad. Uh. Bernie Venti here. That was bad, guys. Shout out to Mac the Snapper. If you guys want clips, images, shorts, videos about a red pill turtle... Snapping on the toes of simps and feminists. Consider subscribing to Mac the Snapper. The link is pinned. Oh, I can't deal with these bitches anymore, guys. I can't deal with this shit. I, I could deal with Rolo for two hours, but as soon as I hear a trans woman talk some bullshit, a trans woman telling me about Hyman, trying to educate me about Hyman's, I gotta end the show. I gotta. I gotta end the show. Hmm. Anyhow, if you want to support the show, if you want to support the Warband, consider donating to Cash App slash Cash Shine Under Chronic. That's Cash App slash Cash Shine Under Chronic. It's been Under Chronic, guys. Take it easy.
Thank you for all the support, my Grigas. Thank you so much. You know, when I started this channel, I thought that, um, I thought it would be a minor, uh, a minor vent to get my true opinions out, my true feelings out, but, well, goddamn, I guess there's a lot of guys that can relate to me, that can listen to me, that can learn from me. I really appreciate that, guys. Anyhow, when I try to, when I try to form honest relationships with Western women, I feel like I'm trying to breathe underwater. That's it for this song.
That's why I'm Meg Tao. Maybe that's why I'm Manosphere. Maybe that's why I changed my perspective on women and relationships. I just can't forget about her. She found it extremely easy to forget about me. And now she is suffering. With a child from a man that did not want to support her. But enough about Chronic's backstory. Let's get to the next beat. Hollywood principal seeing what's next. Let's get it. To be free, far from what I was led to, but no holding back. I've made up my mind. Seeing what's next, I'm not sure what I'll find. Holding the key firmly in my hands, I'm looking for. I know where I stand, and this is it. I've nothing to. Bring me down maybe after I don't know 
Depends on the guy, to be honest. Maybe after you did a chick for a year, she dumped you. You did a chick for a year. She cheated on you. You did a chick for a year. She didn't get puniti. You broke up, whatever it is. As a dude, it's going to take a bit longer for you to get over the chick. Most guys, at least. I guess Chad and Tyrone. Just, I mean, I've dated chicks for a couple years, like two years, and once we broke up, within a week I was banging other chicks. But just because I was banging other chicks didn't mean I was over the, uh, the original chick. I was trying to get over the chick by getting over another chick. If you catch my drift. Um, yeah, so you're seeing what's what's next now. All the principle, seeing what's next. Like once you break up with a chick... Your chick wants to do breaks up with you. Once you break up with a dude, your entire life opens up. You have limitless possibilities when you're dating somebody. You're thinking about building a life with them, a specific life, hopefully, instead of doing, oh, we'll be together. No, you want to talk about your goals. Um, seeing what's next. That was Hollywood Principle. We're going to end this stream with one more song. It's a classic beat. The OGs will recognize this. This is In the Belly by Young Dax. Let's hit it. Smoke some weed to this song, boys. Peace. Goodbye, goodbye. If you want to hear Under Chronic talk some drunk shit, head over to Chaz's stream. I linked it in the pinned comment before. Here. Go to Chaz's stream here. Drunk Chronic talk some shit. Okay. Go ahead and uh, go to Chaz. Cut in Chaz's stream. Because I'm going to go take a piss and a shit. And then go to Chaz's stream and Drunk Chronic can spill some beans. But this show, this channel, 
this video, this live stream is done on this channel, so you better hit up Chaz's channel if you want to hear undercurrent talk some bullshit.